<laughs> I think it's just me and you at the moment. I think Blue's still hiding over on the Discord. <laughs> I think it's just me and you at the moment. Oh, better mute that. We're over in Zoom Blue if you're there. Oh, there he is. He's there. Hi, Peanuts. Yeah, a bit of a small panel tonight, just just Paul, Blue and myself. Farmer's working. Alan's not feeling too well. Um, we need to get a peanut or two on the panel. <laughs> Well, they're always welcome out there. If anyone wants to put their hand up to join, they can fill in fill in the spot. Okay, everyone else vote for somebody to come on the panel that's in the peanut. So we could have a choice of doing bottle cap quiz or do you reckon you'd be able to do anything with that video, Paul? Or you'd have to you'd have to take it would take time to edit out all the images, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what I thought <laughs> I can't too. Do it, do it just on the spot. Yeah, I wouldn't know how to <laughs> Like I said, if I press pause and then you get that line along the bottom of the screen capture or you know, cut and snip the an image, it'd take a while to do. Okay, Fred's going Clive, Zev's going Clive, my mum bakes capes going Mallory. <laughs> I have Mallory for a Prime Minister. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I can't put the Zoom link out in the peanut gallery, I, I don't usually do that have to be in the discord move that out of the road I better um, give my clue for scientists of the day hey yeah AMA AMA a, one, two, three, four, five letters for A. It looks like an Indian or similar name. At a guess. Okay. Today's scientist, A something, A. You missed out on the M or is it meant to be there? Well, that was his middle name. You don't yeah, have to include yeah, okay. his middle name. Discovered that <laughs> two current carrying wires will attract or repel each other. A M P E R E. So is his last name? Oh, it doesn't matter if I do it to everyone. Like his last name wasn't. Oh, I think I spelled it right. No, that wasn't him, was it? His last name. That is indeed his surname, yes. Okay. Now I've got to remember his rest of his name. <laughs> he also discovered fluorine and grouped elements by their properties more than 50 years before. Mendeleev produced his periodic table. Mendeleev. Mendeleev. Mm. Okay. Like tail. No, no Alan tonight, Elmig. <laughs> Ah, uh, Fred's driving. Okay, Fred's out. Clive Wells has got it. He's even got the middle name. Yeah, I don't think I would have got remembered oh, that then. part. I remembered the last name, but not, not the other 
right there. That is indeed him. I beat you, Blue. But I didn't get the first and second mm. name. I didn't get the first and middle name, though. I guessed the last name. Then you didn't beat me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could have put Mr. Ampere. <laughs> yes, he was a very clever person. I wish I'd have recorded some of that. Pay. What I would, oh, no, that he did, he did that live. The line Wait. guy. That was interesting. Hello, Judy Bassett. Hey, Judy. Red said, ask me anything. Oh, wait, it doesn't fit. There are too many letters. I suppose we might as well just jump straight into Lindsay then. Blue, yeah. are you, ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> something proper talk this morning. Oh, yeah, yeah I did, uh, yeah, I, I see that joke. Reference to the mm. flat zoid malfunction. Yeah, I hadn't watched that yet. We'll watch that later. We hatched 45,000 ducks at the hatchery today, Terry. 45,000? Yep. <clears throat> Jeez. Is that an approximate or the exact amount? Oh, approximate. It might have been, you know, a few more or less. Yeah. Sometimes the machine does miscount a little bit, but it's reasonably accurate. I'm just imagine the human going one, two, three, <laughs> four. Stand still, uh, damn it. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Terry, but it wouldn't be like that at all. If it was a human doing it, he'd have to be going one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, Well, one duck takes up so many cubic centimetres space, so you measure that by the floor space, mm -hmm. and then you times that by the number, and, and then you get it approximate. I don't know about the gaps, though. Hi, oh, tiny captain. Lindsay time, I'm not prepared for that. <laughs> I'm sure we must know the specific gravity of a duck. Mm. It's obviously less than that of water. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. Although they do sink quite properly if you uh, clean them just right. Yeah. yeah. Well, they have some sort. Of, they've got some sort of um, oily like stuff in their plumage. They do. Yes. They have an oil gland just above the um the what they call the parson's nose you know the end, end bit the <laughs> the bum end of the duck 
So I could make up a saying that's... like water off the duck's back. Yeah, well, they'd secrete an oil from there and then they use their bill to um, sort of like plaster it all over their feathers. Okay, Fred, why do feathers... Why do ducks have feathers? Oh, okay. <laughs> but quite. Why? Yeah. Why? <laughs> To cover mm. up their butt quacks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Fred, go to, go to your room, Yeah, Fred. go to your room, Fred. <laughs> your butt quacks. <laughs> uh. It's yeah. going to be one of those days. Yeah. I can just sleep it. Yeah. What, straight into Lindsay, no kiss on the mouth or nothing? No, sorry, Zeb. <laughs> uh. So, Terry, which city is increasing its population at the most, uh, at the fastest rate? Which city? Yeah. In Australia or just worldwide? Worldwide. Which city is increasing its mm. population at the fast? What country do you think it's in? I'm guessing China. I was guessing India. Nope. No, it's in Ireland. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because its population is doubling every day. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, the same place we just told Fred to go. <laughs> yeah. Ouch. Yeah. Walked right into that one. <laughs> no, Fred, you missed that one. <laughs> Fred says Mumbai and <laughs> he said oh crap <laughs> I'm using that one later <laughs> yeah, you, you remember that one Fred <laughs> yeah pretty well pretty much Ooh, let me try that in English it <laughs> pretty well summed it up Fred why did the chicken cross the road, Terry? Why did the chicken cross the road? Yeah. Uh, to get to the other side is the original um, answer. No, no, he did it to get to your house, Terry. Knock, knock. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, come on. Knock, knock. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> okay, who's there? Chicken. Chicken who? <laughs> <laughs> knock, uh, knock. I, I, I do have an Irish. I do have an Irish knock knock joke for you. What? You want it? No. Oh, I think I know how this one goes. Now you go first. Yeah, knock knock. <laughs> uh. That throws a lot of people off that one. Yeah. <laughs> what? Wonders what uh, what's other the flat earth other or under? <coughs> okay, tiny captain says Fred. What about? I know why swans have feathers. Because the black swans that therefore too. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not really 
Not really keen on that one, Captain. <laughs> Someone please put Tiny Captain out of his misery and give us a better one. Oh, my mum bakes cakes trying to think of one. Slide the flare across the road to see if it was flat. Yeah. Why did the Flurf's banana factory go out of business? Because they threw out all the bent ones. Well, yeah, they threw out all the curved ones, yeah. <laughs> oh, you're, you're Star Wars. No, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Oh no, I'm watching Rob. Did I miss Lindsay? Rob? Who's Rob? Is there a Rob somebody? Yeah, I know, I'm, I'm delaying Lindsay just for a couple of minutes because I know some people turn up late and they go, oh, did I miss Lindsay yet? Oh, the Flurf Match Factory went out of business due to someone at the end testing each one. Yeah. And <laughs> nerds on in here. <laughs> uh, where were we up to, if Lindsay? Just share that. Does it really matter? <laughs> yeah, does it really matter? Well, I've got a 17 minute one for the next one. Because I think that's his part three of that series that he was doing. Uh, Later, Tropical Gap. Tropical Gap. Tropical Gap. I was on Geo's server the other day and Travis posted a link to a Lindsay video. You know, Travis, the plain truth. Yeah. <laughs> He thinks Lindsay's great, loves listening to him. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's got good ideas. <laughs> I'm going to have to quiz oh, Quince yeah. Travis on Lindsay then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll and say, Blue have you watched all his videos yet? <laughs> yeah, Blue made a comment. He said to Travis, to you, Lindsay probably makes sense, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then you can try to explain it to us. Yeah, you might know that Travis would be a Lindsay fan. Oh, yeah. That, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Travis was offended when I poo pooed his proximal looming idea. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to what? Distal looming? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether you watched any of that video, Blue, but oh man, it was stupid. It was really dumb. <laughs> no, I didn't. Putting a Fresnel lens in between a camera and a and a picture of a boat sticky taped to a cardboard box. <laughs> and then he put a pencil somewhere between the camera and the um, uh, cardboard box. And then he tried to use the Fresnel lens to make the um, uh, image of the pencil rise up and block the um, uh, the uh, picture of the uh, boat on the cardboard box. And to do it, he had to um, hold the Fresnel lens in exactly the right spot and then lift it up halfway so that you could look over the top of it. <laughs> and like I pointed out to him, I said, well, number one, the atmosphere doesn't work like a Fresnel lens. And if you think it does, could you please tell me what the focal length of the atmosphere between you and the ob object is? <laughs> and, and, and whereabouts is this thin Fresnel atmosphere located? At what distance is it from the camera? And how come we have to look over the top of it 
for the effect to happen. Are you saying we have to look over the top of the atmosphere, Travis? He didn't really like those criticisms of his idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is it with these guys? What do they think they're, what do they think they're proving with a parlor trick like that? Yeah, uh, yeah. How could that possibly relate to anything in reality? They think because people use the term atmospheric lensing, they think that the atmosphere literally acts like a... Like a lens. Like a yeah. lens, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Goodness. It might act like a lens, but it's got a very long focal length. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Quite long. And uh, pretty damned unstable, too. Yeah, that's right. It certainly couldn't use the thin lens formula on it. <laughs> El Migs, I'd fail that quiz. <coughs> Oh, I'll press play. All right. Welcome, guys. Welcome back to Flat Earth Philosophy. This is uh, video three, so check out one and two. It's going on a bit, but uh, I'm trying to break down, connect all the physics, biology, flat earth, religion, philosophy. Physics, biology. Into one, because it all is just one. So check out the other two. We'll just go straight into it again here. Uh, the call is quantum jump. Okay, we're, we're talking about the uh, video. quantum we're theory. About facts. Chemical bonding, electrons, specific energy. It can change orbits by jumping one orbit to another by emitting or absorbing energy, meaning swallowing up or spitting out a photon. And this is what's going on with the atmosphere. The lightning, is, <laughs> it's about recycling. The whole thing is about recycling. Death and life. You have to die. There has to be death for new life. And physics, biology is all describing this. Um, so we're talking about this video we're all going to have a look at. Introduction to Quantum Biology by Philip Ball. Because basically a lot of this is all connected with that video. So when he's talking about this emitting light and that, we're talking about the lightning coming through, the sprites and that. When we're purifying the water, the rising water, the pressure, expanding water, goes to the recycling system to, to come back in the centre of Earth. We've been through that, so check out the earlier videos. Uh, swallowing or spitting out a photon of light at a particular wave. These are all wavelengths, varying wavelengths. It's expanding up here, putting the higher frequency down here. So with the higher frequency closer to you, the shift, the red shift is moving away. And then the sun's up here, but you're seeing the, the sun through the whole light spectrum. So these will be a shorter wavelength, longer wavelength, I'd say, up here. All the planets, just like the sun, are focal points of energy in their frequency range, the nucleus of their emission. What? Okay, so you talk well, that was about a word salad. The planets, all in their different layers, they're different planets, there's a planet in each of these layers. Because they represent that frequency band. And that what we see that the focal points, just like the sun, is a focal point in that range due to the magnetic fields and pressure. Frequency. Ernest Rutherford proposed that atoms are like little solar systems. And they are. It was Bohr who said they had specific orbits. And they have, the planets have. Electrons, he's got here. They absorb the energy of the light spectrum. So we're looking through the light spectrum here. It's where the planets are, they're just, they're just not that far away. Homer talks in the earlier about a, just a, a good spear's throw. Right, creating quantum effects need freezing and vacuum states by biology, but, but in biology it's warm and moist. See, creation, but it's, it's cold fusion. It's moist. Back then. That's why you, it's a freezing state of this oh gas God. to turn it back into a liquid, pure water, hydrogenated water. But in biology, back in, in water. Our, <laughs> our realm itself, so it's warm. Creation's cold, life is warm. It's uh, biology. Wave like or particle molecules you start showing some diagrams about a gap, the arrow, arrow and the gap, but check out the video. Moving hydrogen atoms, single photon to another. Uh, so this arrow, like the arrow and the 
from this point. It, it, it goes back to the old um, the sacrum and the, the split in the hip that I talked about earlier in the video. Uh, photon tunneling, quantum tunneling, <coughs> uh, anti-clockwise. We've done that. We've done the thumb thing, okay? We've got the bulls. It's about obelisks as well. Obelisks and the phallus. So the obelisks. There's some magic going on with the, with the dual obelisk system. This is the uh, the dual obelisk. This is connected with hyperspace and what's the other word? The other word. And it's to do with uh, that's associated with that uh, patent that guy Saint Clair has. Yeah, uh, they understood it. Like it's been known for hundreds of years. They know that. The energy centers. Uh, opposite spins, electrons, they are magnetic. He talks about, you know, the opposite spins are magnetic. And this is all about magnetism because that's what the magnetic field of Earth is doing. Opposite spins, the opposite, you know, one's going that way, the other one's going down too, but it's going that way. This is what's going on in here. And that's what's out here, right? So it's happening in here. It's the helix system. And, you know, these square, this is talked about in the earlier. Uh, to reverse the spin, you put them in a magnetic field, he says. Uh, right, left hand rule, hand thumb creates the bull's head, the bull being the male, the proton. It has two nuts. Just which said, don't the laugh helix. at Lindsay's phallus. Uh, what is the helix in the scenario? The Milky Way, and in the Milky Way, leads to which nucleus or focal place of convergence? The sun, the almighty God. And then we go on to the electronic technology. Encoding binary information through controlling electrons and magnetic fields, computer circuits. And who knows most about that? Now, mate Gates. He knows what a silicon chip is, he knows what the pineal gland is. It's just funny he happens to be in the forefront with this, you know, waxination which fries the old silicon chip. If a lot of these uh, problems people are having all stem from a faulty silicon chip now. So there must be death to create life, quantum entanglement, spin states. Nothing moves faster than the speed of light, Einstein was saying. This is, they're talking about this, they refer to the electrons in that. Because how was this electron getting here, that's a short distance, and this one getting all the way over here at the same time? It can't travel faster. No, it just does a longer journey and gets weaker. Ends up as the weaker force in the south. This is the stronger one here. It's not travel, traveling faster. They're all coming in here and they're going in there. It's all traveling at the same speed. It's all connected in here. All the same speed. It's, it's something to do with this, um, we call it spooky action from a distance stuff. Uh, they don't go faster, they travel further and weaken. This is the weak force. Uh, death through friction. Yeah, death through friction. What? Friction. What is friction? From friction comes stimulation. Back to sex again. Stimulation. What comes from stimulation? <laughs> simulation. Our whole realm is simulated. Simulation. Our whole realm is simulation. Round the black hole is what creates. The exploded view of the black hole, remember? This is what creates. Black hole has created our whole realm. It's still in there. No energy in there. Actually, I was supposed to refer that back to this. Oh, this is related back to the black hole. It says here. This is in the way of Hermes. No, this is more literal. You could read this literally. I don't it's, know. It's it describes everything. See, see. All that is moved is not moved in what is moved, but in what is unmoved. The mover is still. It is impossible for him to be moved. He's talking about the black hole here. This is all the movement. It's caused by this stillness, non-movement. You've got to think about this, eh? Voidance. Avoiding this, this point. Ken talks about this. Uh, yeah, so that's that. Uh, let's see, yeah, well, it's a similar thing here. You've got the, um, they talk about the magnetic fields in science, where well, the electrons are teaming up here. That's where the gap, the gap is. All well, the energy is there. The secret is what's going on up this gap here. Magnetic induction motors. There's this gap. You've got the Earth, the Earth system that works the same way. Comes down here, all comes to the tropical gaps. Sacrum, it's coccyx, same thing. All the build up of energy up here at the Capricorn, full of magic cancer. And then what's coming up through here? The magic. Well, that's it, guys. Bit all over the place, really, wasn't it? 
But check out this video. Understand my model here. It cannot be debunked. It all works like this. This here, the cosmic egg. You see? This is the cosmic egg. Can't work it out even to debunk it. This is it. There's the egg there. Easter. Why is it an Easter egg? Because one, it's an egg, and there's a hole. What goes in a hole? A rabbit. A rabbit. Easter bunny. Jack and the bean stalk. There's a big bean stalk. The serpent doing that infinity sign, the magnetic field, the, 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 the crocodile, the head, the eye. Got some photos. You go online and see photos of the sun and the night, night photography and see the big crocodile head, the, the sun there. And things fall back down through this way into the black hole because the black hole's in the centre. That's the black hole. See the sun's slightly off, but that's the black hole there. So the idea is not to fall down the hole, avoid the hole, come back down through here, and that's what the water's doing. The sun. The sun somehow is creating the turning the gas back into liquid. It's all mist coming down here above the boot of guy. The check your oh, memory. This is the third video. I thought it was the second one. Yeah, so there you have it. Understanding anybody who denies a black hole. You just don't go with it. But there has there's not to be the black hole, you better understand the black hole. The way I've described it anyway, not exactly the way science described it probably. Uh, and understanding the cardinoid, what's happening here. How the, how the, <laughs> I how think we've got more of an understanding what a black hole is more than what you have. New moon each month, gets stuck, sits with the moon for 2.2 rotations, then comes back out again. Well, the stars over the night, do the big arc across your sky, then go down, around, and then come back out to do the same cycle the next night. It's just a four minute delay because the sun has gone ahead that much. So now that star you did see is four minutes behind a new set of stars. Try and, try and understand this, get this in your head. Now this is shrinking away due to the expansion here. We expand, everything expands as it goes south. So from the equator, expands the equator, and then it'll start shrinking away from the equator to there. That's the other half, that's the mirrored image. But the field is ex this time factor here keeps expanding. It's all constant coming out from the centre. All energy comes out from the centre of the Earth. The Earth is designed from the centre out. And in subduction, our Earth is like a big auger. And it, it changes. It gets pulled underneath as new comes out. Opposite to what you see above. The sky is moving this way. Earth will move <coughs> the opposite. Everything came out of the water. There was never a great flood. Everything's come out of the water. Trust me. <laughs> it's all written. So we've got the mountaintops and sea flipping seashells. And and how you know the continents will turn they, they turn like this as they move out. Just just like the star formation. The the rum lines, you know, the rum lines are curved, it's a magnetic field. It's the Coriolis. Coriolis coming this way, and when they start start dipping down. That's the hot boss. They call the hot boss. But when it gets here, straight down and it's the middle of the night when you want to when you start comparing these stars in the north to the south because they're all the same they're just lost a bit because they're if you're off this meridian off your north south meridian they're all warped they're, they're hard to find but if you understand where they're positioned here in relation to here so if they're coming around here coming around here but you don't see a match till you get dead in line here and this is what the LED's all about lining that up and and if it's in your your specific alignment, star alignment, it's all to do with the zodiac sign and that, and your planet's conception, all that, bingo. If you're in the right frame of mind, things happen. But that's probably the time where you can marry some stars up at midnight, halfway through the cycle, when there's all light meeting up on your meridian. See, and this is why, this goes back to, um, People keeping their, their own the houses for finally years understand years Coriolis. Thanks, Lindsay. It's all associated with enlightenment because that only happens in that area. This person over here is going to see a different connection, meeting point. So it's this guy. Because these revolve, right? As they move around, it's all turning a little bit. So you've got this revolving and rotation and revolving. What there? Yeah. So if you're awakened in that area, you're supposed to hang out in that area or make sure you go back there that specific time of the year or something rather like that. 
You know what I mean? That's a spiritual thing. After this. Okay. I think I've said enough. Probably lost everybody by now anyway. Um, <laughs> That's an understatement. Yeah, that happened several years ago. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, the truth about it. The, the the Iliad. You know, we're all taught that, oh, the, the coccyx bones, we all had tails. Remember that? <laughs> We've evolved. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, well, thanks for watching. Spread the good news. Here's the flag. Thumbs up. Welcome to all the new subscribers, too. Seem to be piling on these days. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Wonder where you got a new subscriber from. Probably Travis's um, group. Well, if Travis recommended first... you. How could you miss, right? Yeah. Mm. I think that's the first proper ending I've ever seen. Lindsay do. He did another one. One, one other one that I, I recall. Oh, okay. Uh, Spook says, I, I usually visit my mum on Wednesdays, but not this week. What a treat. It is to catch Lindsay, but now I understand why he's a little confusing. I haven't caught all his episodes in sequence. It doesn't matter, Spook. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, standalone, one standalone episode of Lindsay will usually explain everything. You can shuffle Lindsay's uh, episodes like a deck of cards and you won't miss a lick. Mm. The suggestion was made that I do a Lindsay quiz and see how much the peanuts have retained of what they know about Lindsay's philosophies. <laughs> I'm, I'm scared. Yeah. I'd be putting I'd be putting my mental health at risk watching more than one Lindsay episode in a in a in a couple of days. <laughs> I'd definitely fail that quiz. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what have I got here? Oh, I don't want that one. Ouch. Uh, the only derp I found was Toon did a couple of... Close the wrong tab. Oh. One he had um brain leak. Brian um brain leak on one. Somebody on the other half. This is the one. Yeah, I don't know who the other guy was. It was like splitting into two. I don't know who this other person was. Oh, there's uh, Brian. Yeah. <coughs> there's a double, because if somebody else comes into it just after, after Brian does. force has been cut in half therefore it will half flow no since the buoyant force is still greater than than the downward force it will continue to go up so it should and go once, down to almost zero and, are you telling and, me it should stay up until it gets down to almost zero it depends on how much buoyancy is there and that's there's why no i need air left in there bro the, there's hardly no exactly air. and that's why it won't happen until it gets right to that threshold so like i said if you can get your a gauge on your vacuum chamber so that you know exactly where it is uh, at any particular time and you know the cross-sectional area of it the, guess the, what the, the the air resistance in this won't be a big i can show you plenty of experiments where if i take and you could just heat water up and make it less buoyant you can 
you can heat air up and make it more buoyant. Okay. You, there's things you could do, but nothing's uh, ever going to happen instantly, man. Is is as the exactly uh, my equi- point. Yes, as the equilibrium point. occurs, as the equilibrium occurs, like as if I heat something up and and uh in a balloon, as I get it hot, it's going to get lighter and lighter, and it's going to start coming up. Oh, and Brian, up, it's going to go up higher, work its, it's way up. Go, nothing's ever going to happen all instantaneous. That's not what your math predicts, man. So th- it should have been where it's just no air in their heart at all for it for it and 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 you did the math for this then it doesn't matter man it (laughs) absolutely matters it doesn't doesn't say that it happens or it doesn't does buoyancy say it happens or it doesn't buoyancy it says it happens when it crosses the threshold right and it's a gradient right so there's different amounts of buoyancy according to the density and according to the volume correct yeah okay so so it's going to gradiate in other words no. something's going to get more and more buoyant depending on As, it, its around when when the buoyant force is more than nine the buoyant acceleration is more than 9.8 meters per second squared up then the entire time that it is greater than 9.8 meters per second squared it will stay at the top of the chamber and once it gets at 9.8 meters per second squared then it will begin to go down but okay, until so then boat, it will stay at the top water. Y- you didn't even let me finish water. no I, I got you i got you i, I think we all understood <laughs> what you said. Got it. but i'm <laughs> yeah, gonna say right. this so if a boat's floating on water okay and um and we we start we start adding in some thinner to it just for just a quick description we start adding in and mixing some less some uh less dense uh liquid like just say alcohol or whatever oil and uh in the water and then yeah, huh? let's just okay. just for example just, just follow me for a minute okay and then all of a sudden the boat starts sinking down right it starts sinking down and then yep. we start and uh and then we start taking weight off of it like the weight of the balloon itself we start taking weight and it's going to float back up but as the medium that it's sitting in gets thinner it's going to start going down it's going to start going down so yes. that when the air and that's so in the, the buoyancy air getting thinner, so, and that's so, in the so buoyancy the air getting equation. thinner that's my point to so the air getting thinner in the vacuum the balloon should have should have gradiated down no, it, instead it, 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 instead it, it was an instantaneous the uh, boat process. is partially in the water not fully in the water the balloon is fully in the vacuum chamber not partially in the vacuum chamber so i could have used an egg or something okay and you, you and understand egg. what i'm saying <laughs> is that can is you that say, it like an instantaneous say, thing it depends on this the medium. isn't this is an egg <laughs> this is an egg. No, I'm saying it depends on the medium. <laughs> is what I'm telling you. We it can you can get the medium less and less dense, and the egg will move its way down like a density column. Like if you drop a cherry or an apple, whatever, in a density co- tower, it's going to go to its to its position. If you change it, you know, it's in other words, there are different levels of uh, buoyancy, and you yes. just like you like to put it where it's either buoyant this, or it's not. All of this is well predicted by 9.8 meters per second squared, whatever's the cause of it. Uh, but it's well predicted by that. Yeah, the problem is, is the problem is that, is that you that still don't know. Same as a lead ball. You still no, don't there, there, know there the 9.8. The problem is, here's the problem. The problem is you're ignoring the fact that the acceleration was lifting the thing up. Like you just said, it was an acceleration, no, that, getting the beach that, down in the water and you laugh. That's putting so work I accelerated into it. The, I accelerated the mercury. Putting up. work into it. Right. So that's the acceleration. That's the force. That is the force. It's yeah, just you, going you back to equilibrium. Put, put potential energy. Yes. But what is, but you still didn't explain the magnitude of the 9.8. All you I did was. I don't have to explain you, it. You absolutely must. No, F I equals don't, MA. Why, where's, why the, is, where's the specific no, why do quantity I have to explain, of A? If, if I say that I heat up a, a temperature of, of this block right here, and what makes it cool back down? You know, you could give me reasons, but ultimately, convection, it's radiation, just, it's just, just going back to equilibrium, right? To its surrounding. Again, all of these things are well explained and, and well understood. And we, we have mechanisms to predict the, 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 the rate at which things will cool down. All of that is, is all right. But same, you add an extra element thing. to it, though, don't you? You add an extra element to falling down to the center of a ball. That's why you have to have this specific thing we're calling gravity, mm. because you need it pulling to the center of a ball. 
when, Pilo, when all, Pilo is when a, all we're measuring, hold on, all we're measuring is, is things going down, bro. All right, Pilo has a good thing here. He says he doesn't understand that the boat is right at equilibrium, but the balloon is being artificially held down by the ceiling of the chamber. Very true. It's yo, and that's a pretty good point. But still, the concept there. Yo. I, I think to Corey, to Corey yeah. thinks that he wants to come in late now. Hey, yeah, nah, well, Mike, nah, I, nah, I was Mike, in track. I go anyway. Mike, I do got to go, man. I, I was about to tell you anyway, bro. Oh, I wanted right. to go. I just wanted to smooth things over before I left. I didn't want to leave when we're all passionate and shit, bro. All but right. I do got to go. All right, Brian. All right. Thanks Love you, bro. Coming. All right. That loves me, people. To Corey? <laughs> yeah, you hear me? I do. Yeah, I was late. I was. It was like a train that broke down and stuff like that. All right. What did he say? The train broke down. Are you uh, Are you ready? Are you going to be on screen? Uh, I guess so. Uh, I guess yeah, I'll be on screen. I mean, it's, it's, we're an, we're what do you mean? Like half, you mean like hour and a half late? I mean, you could. Did you not have a a, a phone or something? Did I have my phone? I left my phone at the house. I had <laughs> left it on the house. I mean, at the house on the charger. All right. I was moving too fast and stuff, and I realized I had left my phone while I was all the way on the freeway. All right, that's convenient. Well, if if uh, if you're ready, I mean Brian just kind of waffled a bit about gravity. Maybe you can maybe you can do better. Tag team in. Well, he probably beat you in the gravity concept, but you know your ego probably didn't see it. Oh, <laughs> sure, okay. <laughs> all right uh well whenever you're ready uh i'm I'll ready put, i'll put you on screen when when you're ready i'm ready all right are you I, I don't, are you going on screen or not i mean i just oh on my face on screen yes oh i mean i don't know maybe maybe, maybe you're hideously disfigured and and uh i mean Clearly, I am, but yet I still go on screen. Hold on, hold on. Let me uh, try to uh, get on screen. All right. Trying to, I'm trying to get on it real quick. All right. Well, your icon doesn't. Is it is it on screen now? No. Are Are you on a phone or on a computer? I'm on a computer. Okay. Well, it looks like you. That should be easier than it permission, maybe. <laughs> I'm trying to give it permission. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know what's going on and stuff like that. Oh, that's technical. <laughs> well, that's you, too well technical. how would you struggle with that a little bit? I got a couple things that from the audience. Um, uh, let's see, Teresa B about the uh, Chinese uh, see a full moon and New Zealand see a partial moon. Yep, didn't know what to do with that. Um, Obi Wan says it's so funny they invent so many delusions to not understand gravity. Or to make it be something else when it could simply just be um gravity exactly let's see oh i missed one i gotta roll back to this one here yeah uh, it's not it's not letting me i'm not yeah it's not letting me are you in a web browser am i'm in a web browser yeah i'm in a i'm in a zoom app or you're in the zoom app yeah it, it automatically took me to the zoom app and do you have a, a camera installed in your computer? Yeah, I have a camera, but uh, it's like it's like tripping right now. It, tripping. It'll eventually pop up later on, though. It should eventually pop up later on. Eventually later on. OK. <laughs> um, hey, can you John Suffield is what was wanting Brian to explain circumpolar southern so, circumpolar stocks? Eventually, it's almost always later can you explain on. That? That way. Maybe we can get oh, back to that oh, okay. uh, after you after you right. done whatever you're going to do to gravity. Well, I can't I'm do nothing to something that don't exist. Map. I ain't trying to give yeah. gravity a name, a different name, or nothing like that. I'm telling you, it doesn't exist. It never. Oh. It, it was. It's made up. It's a figment of your imagination. You can't prove gravity with the scientific method. We know when we're dealing with the concept of science, we're talking about things that you can actually prove. Uh, now you can come with your little events, so-called events, mathematical equations, if you want to. But if you can't prove this concept in reality, 
then your mathematical concepts gonna go down in the drain. See me, I'm a I'm a smart thinker. I'm not a hard thinker. I don't think hard. I think smart. So why spend all this time trying to debunk the globe and all of the other concepts about the globe? Well, I could just attack you from the heart, which is gravity. If I could destroy gravity, your whole heliocentric might have go down in the toilet. All right. Well, then why do things fall at do nine point eight meters? At nine point eight meters per second. Well, square, first, why, of, first of what, all, what is uh, it? What is the plausible okay, mechanism? Tell you. Let me let me tell you. I'm okay. gonna tell you first of all. You you yourself have not even got that meter down. You can't tell me a feather takes not. I mean, moves at nine point eight meters per second when it hit the ground. So we're not gonna talk about that. But here's the thing. This is what we're going to say how things fall. And this is what I know for a fact. Despite the fact that heavy things fall faster than light things is due to the fate, fact of weight and resistance of this medium that is in. Okay. So you say, so how, so what's what's the cause of the 9.8 meters per second squared downward acceleration? Well, sir, the, the uh, downward acceleration acceleration for 9.8 meters per second that's not really proven you know what i'm saying unless you take a unless you take a meter and measure the speed of the object falling because if a ball falls faster than a feather the feather ain't moving at 9.8 miles per second or meters per second i mean 9.8 meters per second because they both will have to hit the ground at the same time for them to both move at 9.8 meters per second Okay. That's it. Are you aware that there's other ways to measure the, the magnitude of downward acceleration? The magnitude, can you measure the magnitude right now in front of everybody? Yeah. And let's see if you can actually, I tell you what, get something out of your uh, room right there and drop it and see if it's gonna move at 9.8 meters per second magnitude in acceleration. Yeah, you, you can you can actually do that with just a, a, a spring scale or a piezoelectric scale. A, a what? A piezoelectric scale? Uh, not anything in your room. Not any little average stuff in your room. Well, I'm, many people have bathroom scales. They, um, they're spring scales. They they measure the downward acceleration. No, I'm talking about like, can you take something like real light? and something that's real heavy and drop it at the same time and still oh, they both be moving? Yeah, well, I mean. You, you need to second. control to do science right you need to control for confounding variables right so you would need to control for wind resistance wind resistance well yeah do, do, you, do you know has any wind to Corey, resistance? Do, do you know how to do you know how to predict wind resistance the magnitude of of the force of wind resistance the magnitude of the like what you, it depends what you mean by that i, I mean that's a pretty pretty well understood part of physics is how to how to do well, you know, honestly, you know, to tell the, you the truth, right? It's the cross-sectional area, right? You know, the viscosity, right? You, you know what I'm talking about? Well, look, here's the thing. What we flat earthers do is we deal with things on a simplicity level. No uh, kidding. So we, <laughs> hold on, hold on, listen. Oh, oh, nah, because here's the thing. If you can't deal with something on a simplistic level, then that means that your science is all... Is that right? All right, well, then in a simplistic level, please explain to me how... an us uh, uh flash memory works bro we're not talking about flash memory we're talking no, about but, gravity but, no but you're tell you were trying to inform me how science works and if you can't explain it at a simplistic level then apparently you think it's okay, not science I, I, so explain, explain to me at a simplistic level how solid state memory works how and, state enough memory that works? somebody else could could replace could uh, you know redo it what that got to do with gravity it has nothing to do with gravity. It has to do with your claims about how uh, science uh, works. Uh, no, hold on. So you mean to tell me science can be figured out with simple with simple concepts? Go ahead. Explain how. I'm asking you. Can a si I mean, can science be explained on a simplistic level? It, in a simple way, but not not in enough of a, of okay, a way to actually be well controlled and understand it and make good predictions. So, <laughs> but you still can explain it in a simple level, right? Yeah, to, to a kindergartner, oh, I, I can. But, well, but a kindergartner isn't going to make a solid-state drive well, based here's on that the explanation. Thing. Here's the thing with you globe birthers. You globe birthers, y'all the type that are try to use high levels of mathematic measurements in your house just to go to your restroom. 
No, I've I've never done that. But interesting, <laughs> an interesting claim there. So, well, all you could do is just go to your restroom, see that your restroom is across across yeah, the yeah. Uh, like I said, that, from your room. I don't yeah. actually do that. But if I'm going to do a science experiment, I'm going to control for confounding variables. Well, here's the thing and about it that. it might get complicated. Okay, yeah, there's some sciences that might get complicated, but we're talking about gravity. Like, is gravity easy to prove? Yes, it is easy to, okay, to show so, that mass attracts mass in, in a, in oh, a oh, basic mass. true false way. Yes, that is easy okay, to show. Uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, it's easy to show that Gee, mass, mass attracts mass. Me, I mean, an uh, there's a force out there to do that. that needs greater force to be more attractive. I mean, greater mass to be more attractive. Greater mass to be more attractive. Yes. I can tell you that if there's a greater mass next to me, I am more attractive. No, here's the thing. What I'm talking about, this is the reason why, uh, uh, this is because y'all would say the reason that everything fall is because of gravity, which is a pull force, right? So if gravity is a pull force, then that means that an it's elephant can, hold it's on. An what? It's an attractive force. So, force okay, it? it's an attractive force. That's pretty much the same as a pull force because it's bringing things to you. So here's the thing. If an elephant falls and a uh, leaf falls, the elephant is going to fall faster than the leaf. Now, the elephant has significantly more mass than the leaf has more mass, right? So if that's the case, then what type of force out there can pull hit Besides gravity, what type of force out there that can pull heavier objects to faster and easier than it can pull light objects? Because I can pull... Li oh, listen, oh, listen, I'll, hold on, I'll wait, listen. I'll explain it, yeah. Okay, hold on, because let, let me say this last thing. Because here's the thing. I can pull a, e I can pull a box of uh, feathers easier, way easier than I can pull a big-ass box of tools. Now, is that facts that I could that you could pull a box of feathers faster than you, and easier than you could pull a box of tools? Well, it depends on the mass. If they're the same mass, oh, the, it's the same d d challenge. Yep. Oh, I'm t so <laughs> is the box of tools yeah, the same heavier? mass a ton as of the box or a ton of feathers? Well, if yeah, if they were the same mass and everything else is is the same, then it'd be just as challenging. So, to pull so each of is them. it is it the same? It, like, if is a box heavy box of tools the same? mass as a box of feathers a small box of feathers i i, I don't know i mean you, you, you don't your example know. your example bro, doesn't not, include bro. your it, example it, it, doesn't include the masses of the objects so is, what is so, so let's solve this what's the mass of the box of tools okay let's see like, let's say for instance <laughs> the mass to the box you convert oh. mass into oh. let's say you convert oh, right, mass into weight uh, one ma one kilogram will equals point four five four pounds, right? How, how one much? Uh, I'll write that one, down. One, one kilogram equals point four five four pounds. One so therefore, kilogram. So so equals so what? therefore four. Right. Point no point four five four pounds. Okay. Okay, so let's say for instance, a <laughs> box of weight does a heavy old box of weight so that's just, like 200 make pounds sure, i just want to make sure i have the, the right <laughs> me thinks right, he's got that uh, right. yeah the, the right he's position. got it upside right. down Jeez. yeah <laughs> flip the number you dipshit yeah. oh man i don't know how to convert kilos to those other units 2.205 pounds is one kilogram right okay relationship for you there one kilogram equals 0 0.454 pounds that's what yeah. you're saying yeah you measure mass with kilograms and you measure weight with pounds all right uh, this is like this that. is this is <laughs> this is a new number for me i thought well, it was you can a totally look it different up. number i, you can I look know it up. I, I, I have looked it up I, I know that the correct number but but we'll go with yours for now but let's go ahead keep going well i had looked it up on google and i found that it was uh Point four five four kilograms and stuff. I mean, not kilograms weight. I mean pounds. So here's the thing. Let's say a box of tools has a mass of twenty kilograms, right? Okay. Box of tools has a mass of twenty kilograms. Okay. And and how much is the the box of feathers? The box of feathers is pretty much like probably like <laughs> at least one kilogram. Pretty much light. 
Can I get like a more one specific? Kilogram. Okay, one, okay, let's put it like this. Let's put it like this. Okay. Two point <laughs> five pounds. Let's give you a where... prime example. Two point well, five pounds. Well, are you switching units on me in the middle of the track? No, you... let's let's no. stick with kilograms. The the box of tools is twenty kilograms, and the box of feathers is one kilogram. You just asked me to be more specific, so I'm giving you a more specific number. Okay. All right. So and, a more specific number of the box of feathers in weight would be like, let's say two pounds. Let's say two pounds. <laughs> All right. So not one kilogram, uh, two pounds. Okay. No, no, no. Yeah. Two pounds. Okay. Yeah. And all right. Two so pounds. we have, so the, the tools is 20 kilograms and, and the, the feathers is two pounds. Yeah. Okay. So why, <laughs> why are we in different units here? Because they still talk. Oh, oh! You want me to convert that two pounds into a kilogram? Well, I mean, it'd be nice if the it'd units be were the same. I'm happy to convert <laughs> yeah, them myself. And, and if you want, yeah, we could do it all in sheep units. <clears throat> okay, so one, so two uh, kilograms is pretty much like. I mean, not two kilograms. Two pounds. Let's say, yeah, two pounds is pretty much like, like one point something kilograms or something like that one point some kilograms i don't got the exact weight i mean the All exact right. mass number but like I, one point i would kilograms. i would just i would suggest probably two pounds is less than one kilogram maybe point well, nine. No, i'm just i'm just giving you a prime example okay all right well I'm, yeah i'm just giving you a prime. I know that's round, not it. let's just say it's one kilogram how about that make it easy Look, okay, okay, let's make it easy. One kilogram. Right, so you telling me uh, that I can pull a box of feathers that's one kilogram harder than I can. It, it takes me more time. Now, I, I ain't gonna even say more time. It takes me more effort to pull a one pound uh, box of one pound box of um, feathers more than it can pull a twenty pound box of weights. Yeah, more yeah. Than I can. I can. I can. You want to run through the the how we do that? Oh, so wait a minute. So let's get this straight. Let's make sure. <laughs> so you telling me you could pull uh, a twenty pound box of weights easier than you could pull a two pound box of feathers? No, but you got that backwards. Oh uh, no, no, I ain't got it backwards. <laughs> you can't tell me that there's a force out there that can pull the darn two pound uh box of feathers faster. I mean, effortlessly. I mean, less effortlessly uh, you than a twenty pound box feel. of weights. <laughs> I can't work this are, are they on a sled or are they on a, a, a like a wagon? You yourself. We can even say a wagon. Yeah, all right. But so, we talking about us ourselves. Like let's, let's, let's put them. Let's put them on a sled, and then we're gonna pull it with a string across the ground. How about that? A sled across the ground. Yeah. Should we do that? So, so you telling me that the that the heavier object is going to be pulled faster than a, and more sufficient than a lighter object on the no, sled. No, I'm telling you, it's going to go slower when we're pulling it across the ground. And I'll tell oh, you, so I'll, the, I'll go over, oh, I'll so go the mass, oh, so the mass going to be the uh, what the sled with the most mass is going to be pulling more slow. Yeah, I'll go over that with you. You ready? Okay, well that debunks right. gravity. Oh, hold, that... No, no, no. I, I'm going to show you. <laughs> I'll show you because because these are, well, they, these are uh, things you're driving gravity. it across the ground, right? You can say no pulling. We talking about a pull force. Yeah, you're pull it's on the ground on a sled and you're pulling it or dragging it across the ground, right? That's what you mean. You're moving it horizontally. Pretty much. Pretty much. Okay. So so now what you do is is you need to get the 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 downward excel the the force which is in newtons not not kilograms um for for these things. So here here's it's we need this equation. You know what so equation? You, hold on. What, so, what so, equation? What? Are, wait, you, a minute, wait a minute. What equation are we going to use here? We ain't going to use no equations. Of we're course gonna we are. We're going to use sense. s equals ma. <laughs> we go, we're going to use common sense. So we're going to use we're f equals use, ma. No, no. Oh, sorry, listen, this is listen. science. This isn't. This isn't. This no, isn't. No, you science don't understand is using science. critical thinking. Is, yeah, exactly. Okay, so okay, f equals so ma. Okay, so why you need that much math to use critical thinking? So all right, so f equals ma is the second law of motion. Right, you know that, right? Yes. Yes. If <laughs> equals mass times acceleration. That's yes. right. Now, now we know the mass. The mass is 20 kilograms. And the acceleration on the surface of the Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. So let, we'll That's just not proven, that but okay. That's well, not proven. It's just going to go it's with easy, one it's kilogram. It's easily measured. 
it, nah, it's not proven, bro. So, so you telling me you can measure a whole force of gravity that you can't feel, that you can't touch, that you can't see, I, that that I don't have. I feel it right now. Forces? It's pressing down on me right now. On chair. Well, I don't feel it. I don't feel it. Are Are you? I, do you have that I, that thing that feeling in your stomach like you're floating? You just kind of wee. That'd be fun. Nah, I don't time. feel like I don't feel like uh, somebody is pinning me down in full amount on the ground. All right, so here we go. Here we have F equals ma, right? We've got our mass twenty kilograms, and our acceleration nine point eight meters per second squared. Right now, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't expect you to. So, to, so you don't know how to break thing. the mat down. You don't well, know how I to do. break I'm, the mat down. I, I'm doing it right now for you. Just so, just a second. We have uh, twenty. It's like twenty times nine point eight. That would give you eighteen. Yes, that would exactly. Give you and what's 19. the number? Nineteen point six. One hundred ninety-six. And that's in Newtons, 196 Newtons. Yeah, 196 Newtons. Right, and then... Oh, I thought you had to, I, I thought you had uh, put the decimal somewhere else. I didn't see the paper correct. Uh, and then we got the same thing uh, with the with the, the feathers. And we're, we're at not, not at 196, we're at 9.8 Newtons. Yeah, 9.8. Right there. Okay, right. So, so we've got... We've got one thing pressing downward at, at 196, one thing pressing downward at 9.8. Now we're going to drag it, so we need to know the coefficient of friction for okay, the sled. Okay, well, hold on. Wait a minute. Wait so a what's minute. The, wait. What's the coefficient of friction no, for listen, the sled? listen, 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 bro, listen. These are y'all concepts that y'all need to prove. Addition. Yeah, yeah, it's been uh, done. Of course. No, yeah. no, no. Oh, so you telling me, because all I've been asking you, I just, I've been asking you already for like 10 minutes, is there a force out there? But that can witness gravity, that can pull heavier objects more efficient than it can pull lighter objects. It accelerates them the same, but because it's a the yes mass, or no, it's a yes or no. I, I'm explaining it to you here. I'm trying to simple it down. I'm trying to you know aim for right around where you're at. So because the acceleration is the same, but the mass is different, the force is different because it's F equals m a mass times acceleration. We see that right there. The, the more massive object has a stronger force. The less massive object has a less, uh, uh, less <coughs> force. But the actual acceleration is identical. They're both going so, down, accelerated so, down at 9.8 meters per second squared. Let, let, me, let me get this straight. You don't got the, you don't, you don't have it, don't you? You don't, don't have, have you don't have a witnessing force of nature that can witness the concept of gravity being able to pull heavier objects more sufficient than lighter yeah, objects. Yeah, right there. That's not the force. One ninety six is the force. No, that's a mathematical equation. In order for you to have this mathematical equation, we must have a we must be able to prove in nature a force like gravity before you can do some mathematical equations. And my boy, you don't have that because all of listen because all the forces that we deal with. The heavier object is, or the object, the more object is with more mass, the heavy, the more it's gonna take for us to be able to apply more force to that object, which needed the forces that's in us and that's in this reality. It is not needing more mass to be more attractive if it's a pull force. I can pull a box of leaves easier than I could pull a box of weight. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and and, and <laughs> predicted by and that's deep, by and that's deep bugs yeah. grab all this. That, no, actually, that actually, it doesn't. Gravity. It completely supports it, but I, no, I think you're it missing. <laughs> we already did the math here: one ninety-six newtons, bro. I don't care about the math. Nine point eight newtons. Then you forgot like the I critical said, thinking. Now we need we need the coefficient of friction for the sled. Which what what's the coefficient of friction for the sled? The core, dude. Listen, all I, bro. All I asked you was for is there witnessing. You ain't even got to use a force. Let's say any witnesses in nature. Let's take the math problem out real quick. You can put the math problem back in. In nature, in reality, when have you ever dealt with a force that can pull heavier objects with heavier masses easier and more sufficient than you can pull objects with lighter masses? <laughs> Let's put the math equation away first, and we could deal with the math after that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Your level of understanding isn't Come even on. kindergarten, man. See, he, here's the thing. Well, if that's the case, Isaac Newton's level of understanding is kindergarten. It's, yeah, it's level. 
Do you even know how he got the origins of gravity? Do you even know how he figured yes, he, that? Yes, he derived it from Kepler's laws of planetary motion. No, no, he didn't. He saw an apple file to the floor. No, he didn't. He, he didn't. Yes, he did. <laughs> That's a myth. It's a myth. Yes, he did. He derived it from the yes. Kepler's laws of, of planetary motion. That's where he actually oh, got oh, it. Oh, oh, so he's not the one that discovered gravity. He's not I the said, one that. I said he derived it. From Kepler's so he didn't laws, discover gravity. I'm sorry, I wasn't done. He, he derived it from Kepler's laws of uh, of planetary motion. He's the first one to come up with the the equation that we call the law of gravitational attraction. Okay, so can you show me like hardcore evidence of where he was able to get the equation? How, what what made I, him get the equations? What concepts I can, of Nate? Hold on, wait a minute. I can show what you. What, the derivation, minute. but I have a feeling that you won't understand the derivation. What, what concepts of what concepts, man? Now you made me lose my train of thinking, man. You're talking <laughs> over me, and you made me lose my train of thinking. But, All right, okay. Yeah, keep going with the train, man. I, it's too late. I already lost the train of thinking, man, because you right. was talking over me, man. You know okay, what you so need? The, you need some tab. That'll help. Nah, man, I just need you to let me do my thing, so I can be able to get everything I need out. Okay, so now here's the thing. Here's the thing. Since it's obviously factual that you cannot prove that there's a there's a force in nature that actually that, that's your claim. Core, how, okay. core, core, no, until you show me, and so far you didn't. You cannot tell me that this force exists. Okay. And number and number two, oh, you I'll, can't I'll show prove you. To I'll me. gladly show you. And yeah. not only just that, you can't prove. To, okay, so what force? What is the name of the force that can that's like gravity? Since gravity is a force, what's the name of the force? What's the name of the force in Newtonian yes, what, what physics? What is the force in Newtonian physics? We call it gravity. Oh my God, bro! See, you asked me for this debate, bro. You, ask, I, I'm talking about besides gravity. Besides gravity. besides gravity, what other force? What other force besides gravity that can be that can witness a force like gravity? And by the way, this force must be a real strong, real. That's on. Force that's on you. That's on time. you, not me. You're, now, you're the one care that. I about gravity. Yeah, you, I know. You, so you're the one that needs to come up with the explanation for it, not me. No, hold on. So I got to come up with an explanation of something I don't believe. No, you, you need to come up with an explanation for the force that is not mass attracting mass if you think that mass does not attract mass so so go ahead i i guess what force uh, so, oh you tell you ask me like what force is holding us down if it's not gravity yeah yeah what is what is there the ain't cause no force of the, holding us down so then why do we not float up i just told you if you was paying attention <laughs> uh, what did I tell you at first? I, well, there's a lot of words. I don't know. Up, I think we uh, missed a bit somewhere there. I don't know. Okay, what was, what was the key word that I said? So you wasn't paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> so, not, you got see, me laughing a little too much here, Takori. See, see, you asked me for a debate. You begged me for a debate. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, you I mean, didn't, this, is, okay, listen, this listen. has been a lot of fun so far. I, I, I'm going to say it again. Now, stop laughing. So you can hear. Yeah, stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. You're making me laugh. All right, here's the thing. All right, here's the thing. Listen, the reason that things fall is due to the fact of weight and air resistance or medium resistance, like the resistance around the medium that is in due to the weight. The more weight something have, the more resistance that it will have when it falls. The so if you so this is why a leaf that is barely lighter than air and barely have more resistance than the air it falls slowly to the ground but when it hit the when it hit the ocean it doesn't fall because not only do water have eight times more density than the air it also has way more resistance than the air so which why the leaf don't fall to the ground this is just very very simple like check check this out picture a truck a big old 18 wheeler truck in front of two cars right that's blocking the way so the truck is going to hit the cars and break them break through them because of its resistance due to its weight the more weight something has to it including if it's the acceleration if you want to call it that and it accelerates and then it hits the cars due to acceleration in his weight and so you're it always getting the confused cars. between mass so and now weight. if the cars do if a car do the same thing with two 18 wheelers blocking the streets it's not gonna do that because it has no you can't even draw so anyways <laughs> you can't even put the wheels straight <laughs> so anyways 
So anyways, here's the thing. So the car is going to hit. I mean, it's not going to break through the 18 wheelers because it don't have enough weight and because it don't have enough weight, the resistance. So this is why an air balloon that is because the helium is a substance that is lighter than air. So due to the fact that it's a substance that's lighter than air, it don't have no resistance against the air. So it floats up and an anchor falls because it's heavier, way heavier than the air. This is just simple. If gravity is a real force, it's supposed to pull the balloon down too, but it doesn't. It, it does though. If I can pull are you, that anchor are you down, aware? what make you think I can't pull the balloon down? Are you aware that uh, this, this might blow your mind? Are you aware that multiple forces can act simultaneously on one object? Oh, so wait a minute. So now it's not just gravity that's holding us down now. There's multiple forces that act. I, I, okay, like I what? I know like, this, this is like, right? Okay, like, like <laughs> what? Multiple forces like simultaneously what? on an object. Like what? Buoyancy is a force. <laughs> Buoyancy is Did the you fact. know that? Did you know that buoyancy is a force? To you, I just explained to you about buoyancy. Okay. I just and, explained to you and, about and buoyancy. What causes buoyancy? Oh, okay, so hold on, wait a minute. Buoyancy is what holds us down to the ground? No, buoyancy is 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 actually in the opposite direction. It gravity. causes an object to float up due to the fact that it's lighter than the surrounding it, medium it's, that it's, it's in, an, right? It's an upward force, yeah. It's, an, it's not a force. Is Buoy the fact buoyancy is a force? Absolutely, it is. No, yeah. I'm talking about. I'm talking about like. You didn't know that buoyancy was a force. No, listen. I'm not it's saying. It's okay. I, it's listen, fine I if know you didn't buoyancy, know that. Listen, I'm I know happy to teach you. Is a force, but okay. we're talking about gravity. We're talking about what holds us down to the ground. Yeah, gravity. So you talk does. about there's multiple. You talk about there's multiple forces out there. We're yeah. talking about what holds and, us and down to the ground. Yes. We're not talk gravity pull uh, is a, is a force down. Buoyancy is a force up. And wind resistance, when something's in motion, is a force up as well. So wind resistance is a force that forces up when something's so, falling. When something's falling, when, so, when, so, so, when our when our truck is driving, wind resistance is 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 in the opposite direction as the truck is going. But but hold on, wait a minute. The gravity, like if gravity is holding that big ass eighteen wheeler down that you yeah. just drew, what make you think it can't? What make you my bad? What make what make you think you can't uh what make you think you can't pull down an air balloon? Because if I can hold down the big old 18 wheeler, I can hold I'm pretty sure I can hold down the air balloon. Yeah, but the, the buoyant force on the air balloon is greater than the oh, so, than the downward force due to gravity. And again, oh hold we on, can, hold on. Wait a because, minute. Because because hold on. No, 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 I'm not done okay, explaining it. Because as we already went through. If something has a smaller mass, it has a smaller force applied to it. 18-wheeler, large mass, large force. Balloon, small mass, small force. And when the force of gravity on the balloon is less than the force of uh, buoyancy, then it will go up. Once they equalize, then it'll start to come down. Here's the thing. That debunks gravity. No, that actually, it's predicted <laughs> by gravity. Just, Did just, you just, know that the just, wheels on the bus go round and round? <laughs> so do the wheels on the truck. Do you know that the truck is heavier than a balloon? Yes. So gravity was yeah. supposed to pull the balloon down? So wait a minute. Let me get something straight. You're telling me that the buoyant force is greater than the gravitational force, right? For the balloon. That causes the, for for the, the balloon, balloon yes. to float yes. up. Because, oh, because, so the, hold on. because so, hold it on. displaces air, and the quantity of air that it displaces and the mass of the air that it displaced is is directly proportional to the upward uh, force. So you that pretty it much just agree with what I say. No, I'm I, saying, I, no, I listen. agreed. I, I agreed with with decades and centuries of, of empirical measurements, and you listen, are the one that's disagreeing with that. Listen, I'm I'm using nature. I'm using things that I can deal now, with in my actual when you when you me. were in uh, high school. That you did you finish high school? Yes, I finished high okay. school. Did you did you not take physics when you were in high school? Yes, I took physics in high school. You did. Okay, so so all of these things I you took are, it in eleventh grade. Okay, and then what did you take in twelfth grade? Uh, what I took in the twelfth grade uh, for science. Uh, shoot, I gotta look at my transcripts and stuff like that. But I know I took physics in eleventh grade. I took biology in the ninth grade and stuff like that. I took biology in the ninth grade. And what did you uh, take chemistry? 
I took chemistry in the 10th grade. Okay. I took physics in a, uh, 11th grade. I took physics in 11th grade and in the 12th grade. I don't remember what I took it in the 12th grade and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah. well, let I, me show you. I, I, I was skipping and stuff like that. And, you know, yeah, let me, let me show you something here. These are the actual notes and cheat sheets. Not all of them. I, I, I lost a few of them that I took when I was in high school for, uh, in physics class. Let's see here. Oh yeah. You took, so wait a minute. You took all of those notes since high school no this was during high school yeah that's what i'm saying yeah. you took you had so, all those notes doing since high school but yeah. yet you still it's, haven't it's showed me or, you still haven't showed me no concept in nature that proves what i was saying about gravity and that the fact that gravity being this real strong and real weak force yeah Can you I, tell I mean me already about it? I already we already covered it right here so so that math right, right there, there proves that there's a strong weak weak force out there is real strong and real weak well don't don't, don't be don't be uh, confused by the weak force that's a different fundamental force so is it is it is it a strong and a weak force at the same time or is it a strong and gravity a weak force is the weakest of the four fundamental forces i didn't ask you all that i asked was it a strong ironically and a weak force? ironically the weak force is stronger than gravity so hold on. So the weak force is stronger than gravity. Yeah. So how you gonna sit here? So if the weak force, if gravity is weaker than the weak force, then how you gonna sit here and tell us that it is strong enough to hold all oh. of the waters of the oh. earth? Hold on, wait a That's minute. That's because the weak force <laughs> only wait, acts at a subatomic level. Wait, bro. Wait, bro. You gotta let me speak, bro. You you interrupted me. You can't tell me that a force that's real weaker than a weak force can hold all the water. Do you know how much water is in the earth? 321 trillion billion gallons of water. Something Spending like that, at yeah. at a thousand miles an hour while moving at 67,000 well, miles an go. hour while being kidnapped by the sun and walked through our yeah. space at 483 miles an hour. You tell me a weak force that you are. Good point. Yeah, I'll tell you what. It's, it's, it's simple. Ready? The weak force only acts at a subatomic level. So, is it a so? It's not really a weak force. It's just weak on the sub sort of subatomic level. Yeah, the weak force is 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 so I so. Mean, it's, it's 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 so, kind of merged with the electromagnetic force. So so it's merged with the strong force also, right? Uh, no, the the not not at the. Oh, so gravity maybe, is not maybe a, in the first couple seconds. Gravity uh, or, is not a um, strong force, right? Not seconds, much less than seconds. But gravity is the weakest of the four fundamental forces. But like we like we said, because it's proportional to mass. Okay, so what's the strongest? So what's the strongest force in the universe? The strongest force is yes. is uh, probably the strong force. That's the strong holds, force. That's so what holds. That's what holds po uh, quarks. <laughs> together to form a so proton or neutron. So wouldn't it be a strong force that would be holding all the heavy objects down to the no, earth it, to keep it from being you know, chunked the, in the, the space universe, The universe gets to mountain. gets to do whatever it chose to do Man, and, you, and not, not what you want it to do. <laughs> no, it's not what I want so, it to do because right, listen. So, so here's what you're missing. And I'm going to explain it again. Here's what you're missing. It the, the force is directly proportional to the mass because F equals MA, mass times acceleration the acceleration is consistent 9.8 9.8 different mass different force so that was your That's best answer gravity can do i mean uh the universe can do what it want to do well you know what the universe do you 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 know what the universe do the universe do tells you like this if there's a force out there that's heavy i mean that's that can hold all the waters to the earth to the ball that means it's a strong force <laughs> <laughs> but at the same well, time, but if, but, if but the mass force, of the water is high, therefore the force is high. I don't, I don't, and see that don't make no sense because uh, to you, the, I, I believe listen, that it doesn't. No, listen, listen, because if the mass of the force is higher, so the, the more attractive the gravitational pull is, or the stronger gravity is, <laughs> then what the heck make you think you can't bottle up a cup of water in a darn cup if it can bottle up all the waters of the earth? Look, in a darn cup. Hold on, check What's this it? out. What's a dern well, cup? I didn't want to cuss and stuff, but here's what, the thing. What's a if I can, a wait, dern? If I can, if I can uh bottle up a big ass quilt, if I can bottle up a big ass heavy ass quilt, what the hell make you think I can't bottle up a dern small napkin? But according to gravity, it can bottle up the small, the big old quilt 
but it can't ball up the small napkin. A quilt? A quilt, a big old heavy cover. Like a blanket? Yes, a big old heavy cover. What? What's causing, why is this Dern quilt balling up? I'm saying if I can ball it up, if I can ball up a quilt, so you're into getting a, a ball, quilt, just like and you're, and balling, you're balling it, it up. You're like this darn balling quilt. I'm gonna just, ball up this darn quilt. Yeah, and ball it up. Okay. What make it, so if I can ball up that heavy ass quilt, you don't think I can ball up a piece of paper? Okay. So I can I ball up a piece of paper? No, listen. No, because if the earth is, I mean, if gravity is balling up all the waters of the earth to to a ball. Then what? it should be able to bow up a pound of water. That pound of water is light as hell. The, the pound of water is eight pounds. I say the pint. Pi the pint, pint of water. The pint of water is one pound. Yes. So it can bow, it can't bow up three hundred and twenty one trillion billion gallons of water. It can bow up three hundred and twenty one trillion billion but again, gallons of water. You, you forgot this proportionality thing. Bro, I don't care it's about directly all that. proportional to its mass. We're I know you don't under thinking. I know you don't because it doesn't make sense to you because I don't think you actually took physics. So let's be serious. Okay, you well you I could show you my high school I could show you my high school diploma. Did, I had to you, take physics if I got a high school diploma. Did, did I actually you, got a I actually got a ninety five in physics. But did you come on, did you cheat? Did I cheat? Yeah. Did, did I you cheat? cheat to get a ninety five? No, I didn't cheat to get a 95, but, you know, I don't need big old but, long so, math. So, that, so, so then like, why why is this something that you don't seem to have ever used before? No, because here's the thing. Here's the thing. Because I'm not against math. I'm not against math. It sure I can sounds like it, it, it hurt you somehow. I can, I can, I can, uh, no, it don't hurt me and stuff like that. Here's the thing. I'm not against math, but the thing is, you don't need mathematic equations, that events to realize something so simple. I don't need huh. a big old mathematical equation to know that I can pick up a heavy ass computer. If I can pick up a heavy computer, God damn it, I can pick up a small pencil. You need a math equation for that. It's not I even that hard, we'll it's simple. It but you see, the, the, the computer has more mass uh, than the pencil, therefore the it, force is higher than the pencil. Because again, so, I think it's just gonna drag on like this for the rest of it. <laughs> Huh? What's Farmer doing here? He's supposed to be at work. <laughs> ah, okay. Alright, we're just in time for Lindsay, guys. Oh, I got a minute. <laughs> <See ya. laughs> That didn't Look, work. I've gone all the way to I've gone all the way to bloody London to avoid Lindsay. Don't yeah, do that to me. Uh, <laughs> and then as soon as you get back, we go. Yeah, just in time for Lindsay. Lindsay. <laughs> we had your track. We had your track tracker on your on your vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's nearly there. Nearly there. <laughs> oh dear, how's it going? Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. We haven't got a lot going on today. Alan's not here. Paul didn't get to do a quiz. Uh, hey. you're, and you're at home at nearly 2.23 in the afternoon. Okay. Yep. Yeah, you, well, I, I where did... Where did you go? Um, I, I went to um, uh, Wembley in London, um, a, a, a little sort of suburb of Wembley. Of course, Wembley's a suburb of London. But, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's a new little store that they're just... Just getting going on the services. That's just a just a little meeting to sort of go over things and bobs that are outstanding and queries and questions and not the sort of thing you can do online, you know. No. Not not the most um salubrious part of London I've ever seen, but hey. And then on, on the way home I did my shopping in Milton Keynes. Only because where I go shopping is right next to the Milton Keynes Football Stadium. And for the next few weeks and the next few weekends, they're hosting some UEFA women's football championship thing. And and the parking will be horrendous. But the strange thing is, it's not the England squad. I think it's the Italians, but the Milton Keynes are hosting them. 
football. I don't get it. You talk, we call it soccer over here for some strange reason. Uh, you seem to be following yeah. the Americans. Um, is that what is it the Americans call it soccer? The Americans call it soccer because what they call football, we call pretend rugby. I mean, yeah. American football. <laughs> yeah, pretend rugby, yeah. <laughs> oh, I got the ball. Stop. We're going to play the ball. Because, of course, you guys have a completely different type of football, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. We, the we, keep, we, keep, we keep the ball and we keep football. running until we get over the line on the other end. <laughs> yeah, it, it, that seems an amalgamation of most of them, I think. From what I've seen of it. So, yes, it's um, we're building up to getting one of those little mini heat waves again, I think. It's quite warm out there. Oh, you got the opposite. Um, yes, it's it's gradually creeping up in temperature, and apparently by next Thursday, not by next Tuesday, it'll be thirty degrees. So it's yeah, that's getting warm. Yeah, it, it, well, it is. I mean, it's it's still getting warmer here at the moment. It's it's bloody hot down in London. I'm glad the car's got air conditioning. Well, yeah, twenty five today. It's and it's it's gradually creeping up. I think we've finished <coughs> the main lot of um heavy rain the last 24 hours anyway at least yeah it's still cloudy and maybe the odd sprinkle but not as heavy as it's been flooding everywhere towns cut off not where i am but west of sydney oh i think paul's probably missed out on all this rain down that way by the look of the weather map yeah no we haven't had hardly any rain so yeah no, no, missed out on it. Well, he, and neither have we. We 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 got a few showers. When was it? Oh, it was qualifying Saturday. Um, we got a few showers Saturday. We, we we haven't had anything since, and that certainly the next week we won't be getting any. Oh no, I won't be able to do the gardening. Oh. Well, ground's like bloody concrete. You can't do anything with it. It's too it's too dry. Yeah. And that's when I like to mow the lawn. Is when it's dry. Don't like mowing it when it's wet. No, I can cut the grass, but it's about all I can do. Well, I'll do a couple of handfuls of um, bottle caps to get rid of some of these bottle caps and see what we get. <laughs> I can't answer any of the questions, but oh, well, I've we'll timed get, that we'll just get, right. Yeah, we'll just get through them pretty quick, and you can yeah. say them out loud or whatever. Doesn't matter for in here. The peanuts can type whatever they want in the peanuts gallery. I'll start off with an easy one. Uh, where would you find the sea of tranquility? That's an easy one. That's an easy one. Most of the peanuts <laughs> should guess that one. I was going to say, it, if anybody doesn't, they deserve a slap. Mm. <laughs> is, is it somewhere in between the B and the D of tranquility? Yes. Yes, Paul. Oh, yes. Oh. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> I, I'll give you a clue. It's in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> that help? <laughs> universe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, okay, another one. Another easy one. What metallic alloy is a mixture of copper and zinc? Copper and zinc? Yeah, that's an easy one. Is it? Yeah, as Paul copper puts it, it's an easy one. <laughs> copper and zinc? Yeah. Not sure about that one. How many is it, is it? Look at how many oh, peanuts are getting it wrong. Do, do, yeah, they're getting do it they wrong. Balls out of, do they make balls out of it? They're getting it wrong, Paul. Huh? They're getting it wrong. Yeah. And I thought this would be an easy one. They, do they make brass balls out of it? 
Uh, look like finally oh. Elmig's got it. <laughs> I thought Blue would have got that one straight away. Uh, what's this one? Oh, yeah. Oh, right, Jizzle. Bronze is 10. Copper and 10. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, we know what a farrier makes, don't we? That's easy. Any up farrier? Yeah. Well, oh, oh any horses? Any horses? Oh, yes, not that one. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one might be a bit tricky for the Brits and the Americans. <laughs> Which Aussie director created the Mad Max series? Oh, what's his bloody name? Because he just done the last one, didn't he? You know, he. he... <sighs> I can't. I can't remember his name. That's, I, I should know it. I can't remember it. I'll see if the peanut. See if the peanut knows. Hmm. Mill hmm? Gibson. <laughs> no. <Milk. laughs> <coughs> Tarantino definitely wasn't Tarantino <laughs> no that I do bloody know yeah, I can't remember I'm going to have to have a look now mm -hmm. of course it was yes that's it mm. yeah 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 yeah. Actually, I couldn't remember how many Aussie directors are there well, Jesse, there's actually a few. A fella, a quick fella, might have a gun under there. I'd have to pin his head to the panel. <laughs> Mad Max 2 is just my favourite of the lot. Thousands of gallons, much as you like. Ka chunk, ka chunk, ka chunk. Ka chunk, ka chunk. Yeah. And the feral kid and his razor sharp boomerang. I got it. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> Takes all <laughs> 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 oh dear so anyone go for and that, a... and that beautiful car gets destroyed oh they all do yeah but I mean Max's I mean I love that car I mean I, I know it doesn't actually you know work you know you can't just turn the supercharger on and off like that but oh, it's just something about it that big old V8 going <laughs> 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 uh, not Peter Weller they're, they're, they're not get Peter Weller. He was Robocop. Yeah. Anyone anyone said George yet? By George. No, I haven't. No, George. Last name starts with M. Do you know, I think you've got them stumped. Yeah, I think we do. Can't he might be Bruce. Australian, but he's not called Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's causing the confusion. <laughs> no, I don't think any of the peanuts are going to get this one. Three, two, one. No, George Miller. Miller. I'm not sure if he did all of them, but I know he did the first one and he did this most recent one, Fury Road. I can't remember whether he did the the middle two or not probably do oh i got a soccer question oh the farm puts it football footy which soccer That's team played at the stadium of eight oh okay I think we've had this one before. Hmm. No, no guesses, Farmer? What no. do I know about football? Okay. <laughs> I don't think anyone out there is going to get it either by the sound of it. No. Such... Sunderland FC. Oh. Yeah. Okay. 
Can't win them all. No. Nope. Ah, okay. In which state did Harold Holt go missing? A lot of Aussie questions in here. <laughs> Harold Holt. Oh, well, it's because it's Aussie beer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, not all the no questions food. are Aussie orientated. <laughs> yeah, but it's hardly surprising that you're going to get Aussie orientated <laughs> questions on bottle tops that came off Aussie beer, I mean. <laughs> Well, you guys send me over some British beer or American beer with some questions under it, and then we'll do that quiz, okay? <laughs> it would be in Victoria. <laughs> yeah, gr grumpy old Gunt got it. And Dave got it. Oh, Carl said Queensland. Well, at least Carl had a guess. No. <laughs> yeah, Victoria. <laughs> My answer is Paul Hogan to all, all the remaining questions. questions. Okay, then. <laughs> I don't know what I've got the to talk. <laughs> the same The same thought. Oh, dear. Oh, I've already had metallic alloy mixture of copper and zinc. We've already had that one. I've already got a double. Anyone watch Game of Thrones? Yes. Nope. Okay. So don't ask me to re don't ask me to remember who was son of who and all the rest of it though. Oh no, they just want to know that this, the show Game of Thrones. Oh, oh hmm. shit! I'm trying to read the question. Consists consists of how many seasons? How many seasons was it? Um, mm. Was it six? Oh, I can't, it, it just seemed to go on forever. I can't remember. I think it was at least six. I think it was six. I can't quite read was it, it probably. The answer it's a bit obscure. It's either, it's either six or eight. I know it was an even number, but... Yeah, I, got, I think I've got eight here. Can anyone put eight could, down? Yeah, yeah, could well have been eight. Oh, Jazz yeah. have got eight. Okay. Yeah. yeah, well, the problem was that it's supposedly based on his books, but they were filming them quicker than he could write them. Hey, how could you so film something? What? He writes um, uh, George R. R. Martin or whatever he's called. He writes very, very slowly. Mm. So they'd started to adapt his books into the series. And, and then as they were getting to the end, it's like... I haven't written that one yet. <laughs> so, so what he, he he'd sort of outlined it. So he gave them, you know, the outline of the plot, mm. and mm. then they just went ahead and filmed it anyway. Um, okay. But now, now apparently they're producing uh, prequels to it all. So they've established his whole timeline, and now they're going back to you know the timeline before. Mm. And I don't know whether that's based on his books because he's writing them as well. But there was also a concern that he wouldn't actually live to finish everything off because he's oh, not a young lad. Okay. And he does, yeah, he, he writes very, very slowly. Oh. So. I mean, if, if if you like sort of, you know, violence, fantasy and sex all rolled into one, there's some good stuff. You know, oh, oh and there's Sean Bean, <coughs> briefly. Oh, yeah, Sean Bean, yeah. But you know what happens to Sean Bean in films? Okay. Uh, worldwide, which human organ is is most transplanted? Kidney. Yeah. Hmm? You didn't get the more the funny, peanuts. I'd funny feeling you beat it the peanuts. The heart. Blue. Hmm? You beat the peanuts. Oh. Jessica goes li her liver. Live liver transplant. Yeah. Can we have your liver? I'm not done with it. <laughs> I 
and then I got what is the largest internal human organ? Skin. No, or internal. internal. Oh, internal. Yeah, that was, internal. yeah, I tricked you on that one, Blue. I didn't say which hmm. is the largest human organ. No, I thought you said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I thought it was the stomach um, thing, or whatever they call it. The intestines. I'd go with liver. Yeah. I, I agree with Carl. I think it's liver. Okay. Uh, okay, another book. Which author wrote the Da Vinci Code? That would have been uh, Dan. Is it Dan, Dan Brown? Brown? See the peanuts get that one. Which wrench yet? When you actually look at it, is is just a load of twaddle. <laughs> is that the technical term? Well, it's it's the polite technical term. Okay. Yes, I, yeah. I I did have the um, the uh, unfortunately I read several of his books and pff, I had to give up in the end because I just nah. But it made for a good film, I suppose. Oh, Jazz said, what was the answer to the largest internal organ? The one that Blue said. What? After skin? <laughs> no, not the skin. <laughs> <laughs> no, the answer he gave after skin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. <laughs> Fix Jezza up, Peanuts, while I'm reading out the next question. Okay, which physicist famously shouted Eureka? <laughs> That's an easy one, that one. <laughs> while he was taking a bath, I think. So, so the story goes, yes. So the story goes, yeah. Well, we can't verify it, though, can we? No, well, there's, there's a lot of stories about sort of physicists and that that are just purely apocryphal, you know, mm. like like somebody's yeah. apple. Yes. We haven't found out about that one yet. Because did, yeah, yeah, did they take baths in those days? Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> now, they're all getting that one right. Yeah, I should hope so too. Hey, no singing, truth notes. <coughs> okay, this is another Australian one. No, maybe some people might know. In which town did Ned Kelly make his last stand? <laughs> Farmer shakes no. his head, no? No, I ain't got a clue on that one. Okay. <laughs> Carl said Alice Springs. <laughs> Well, obviously, the Aussies are going to get this one out there. Jazz is going to... What? Drillery? No. Where? No. Dave got it right first. Okay, what's the name of the, for a male rabbit? Jack. <laughs> <laughs> They're bucks, aren't they? No. They're bucks. <laughs> Hello, please, Jack. Jack. <laughs> well, okay. Well, the female the one's called the... Jill's, then. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. Jack and Jill. <laughs> what the female called Jill? Bill Blue muted himself. He's probably <laughs> laughing to death over there. It's, it's the female equivalent of jacking off, yeah. I think Dave was first with uh, Buck. Bugs. Yeah, they're all called Bugs. Yeah. Oh, Bugs. Yeah, Bugs, Bugs. Bunny. Yeah. Bugs. <laughs> no, they're called Mister. Yeah, but was That's Bugs Mr. Bunny Rabbit a male or a female <laughs> rabbit? Well, you got a male voice. Okay. Well, Mel Blank had done the voice for him, so... Exactly. Can only presume it, it was a, a male rabbit. Okay. 
Oculation is the formal term for which human act. Oculation? Yeah. Isn't that connected with the eyes? Isn't that seeing? No. Oculation. So, yeah. Something to do with the mouth, wouldn't it, Terry? Yeah, you could probably do it with your yeah. mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, probably Carl, Carl said time. swallow. <laughs> Is there a French version of it? <laughs> Not getting it out there. Taking this. <laughs> Being a good girl. No. <laughs> um, I don't think so. Yeah, there is a French version for it. Yeah, there is, yeah. And would you... That involves the tongue. And, and when you got somebody <laughs> that's got a uh, foul language, as you say, would you do this to your mother with that mouth? Hmm. Oculate my ass. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't have the same ring to it, though, does it? No, no. it doesn't, does it? No. No, it, okay, it likes Clive. a certain punch, Clive, doesn't Clive it? Clive eventually yeah. figured it out. <laughs> oh, excuse me. What Traditionally, what colour is the three ball in pool? Traditionally. I don't know. I, don't know. I never used to play that there. version. Anyone play that, pool that's... out there? That's the American version, isn't it? Because over here we only have two colours. Well, we've got snooker, which has got multicoloured balls plus the red ones. Well, of course, there's 15 reds. Then there's ye yellow, green, brown, blue, pink and black in that order. Yeah. But as for American pool, I got a clue. Never, never really played that. Well, they're the ones with numbers on it, aren't they? Exactly, yeah. But played differently. I've got yellow, orange, yellow, pink, blue. I'll have to scroll back up. Did I did I get an answer? No. No, we haven't got the colour out there yet. Now I've got many colours to go. I mean I know what the eight ball is. No, everyone knows what that is. But what the other ones are, I couldn't tell you. Because we just that there weren't that many certainly not Back in the back in the day when I was a pool and a snooker player, there just there weren't that many American pool tables around. Um, okay, Carl, Carl put a question mark on the end of his tiny captain. Ah, I haven't counted how many we've done yet. We'll go by time. Uh, give us a look. Oh dear. Just no matter how many I read, it doesn't seem to put a, much of a dent in these piles of caps. That that may, might say something about your beer consumption. Yeah, but these have been collected for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the missus opened the cupboard up the other day. She found a couple of cups in the cupboard with empty caps in them. <laughs> and I went, What, you're oh. running out of places to hide? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was keeping them for, for a rainy day. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Madison Square Garden is in which American city? See, they're not all Australian is so, questions. Is it so good they named it twice? Uh, but it's not the old. One. It's not the old one, though. It's it's the opposite. Yeah, it is so good that yeah, as the song goes, so good they named it twice. That's the starting scene from Highlander. Madison Square Gardens in the car park. Yeah, Carl got that one. New York, New York. I've been to New York. It's in Lincolnshire. Blink and you miss it. It's about a dozen houses. 
Uh, which country was formerly known as Rhodesia? Oh, God, what do they call it oh, now? Oh, okay. Um, Oh, Carl's quick on the ball there for the answer. Yeah. Oh, because it was it was named after um, Cecil Rhodes, wasn't it? That's why it was called Rhodesia. Hmm. How many stars on the Australian flag, Farmer? Uh, five. Or is it is it is it been cut off? <laughs> Six. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. I can see six. Is there another one being cut off or is that it? No, no it's, oh, it's sort of slightly, yeah. I don't know why it's half on around the side there. Yeah, why don't you see the Southern Cross in the, in the Northern Hemisphere? Because the Earth's not flat. Oh. It gets in the way. Ah. <laughs> uh. Why don't you see Polaris from where you are? What's a Polaris? There you go. Well, it was a ballistic missile. Okay. Uh, back to an equine uh, question. What is the standard birthday of Australian racehorses? Have you got a birthday for a British racehorses? I really don't like horses, so I don't know that much about racehorses. Look, I grew up outside bloody Newmarket. I hate the <laughs> thing. I even had a flat in the stables full of racehorses. I don't like them. <laughs> Wait, are we getting answers? Yeah, we're getting answers, Jezza. How many questions if you pay answers you missed out on? If you pay attention, Jezza. Mm. Oh, Dave's going August 1st. Well, 1923. <laughs> Dave got it's, it right. Some old horses. Oh, Dave, I think Dave got it first before, but he's. What, August the 1st? Yeah, yeah, that's the birthday for horses. Oh, excuse me, I'm bloody knackered. But if it was born in January, it... I don't know how they work that out. The Horsey Brigade are a strange lot. Yeah. Okay, TV shows, anyone good at? Depends which one they are. American? Possibly. Uh, Martin Sheen plays a US president in what TV show? <laughs> it's one of the ones that went on forever and I never got around to watching it. Um, I didn't either. I... I know the one you're on about, but it's just because they're just... There were so many series going on at the time that you uh, just... Uh. And then you think, oh, shall I go back and start watching it all now? And there's like, you know, 15 seasons or something. You think, nah. Okay, I'll give you a couple of clues. Um, a, a direction? Yeah, West Wing, that's what it was. Yeah. I knew of it, but <laughs> I I don't think I ever uh, watched it in one episode. Out there, me. House of Cards? Uh, is that, a, is that a president movie? I don't know. It's that's another it, political it? one, isn't it? House of Cards, I think. I don't yeah. think I've seen that one either. No, Elmix is first for that one. No, I never watched it either. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's just problem now. You, get, you look on Netflix and it suggests something. And you think, oh, I, that passed me by. And then, like you said, it's seven seasons. And you think, no. Because there's so much stuff, you know, constantly coming out that sometimes you just can't go back and... You know, binge these things from scratch. Where was the Titanic going to go if it didn't sink? That way. No, hang on. That way. <laughs> that was... Where, was that Hendon? <laughs> yeah, it was where... Yeah, it was a carried on going west, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was going to New York is where it yeah. was going. Yeah, if it didn't enter an ass kicking contest with an iceberg... <laughs> I've been to the last Irish port it sailed from. That, that's that's quite interesting. It got quite interesting little bits and bobs going on down there. I'm trying to remember its bloody name now. 
there was a cruise liner had docked when we, we were spending a day down there. And there's an island where they used to have a prison and you take a boat ride out to the island and they've got this cruise ship and, and it's literally somebody's taken a skyscraper and laid it on its side. They are immense. I looked it up when we got back. It was over 100,000 tonnes in displacement. Never seen anything like it. Make an aircraft carrier look small. In what part of the body are metatarsal bones? Uh, that's your feet, isn't it? Yep. That's your feet, yeah. yes. Tarsals are your feet and yep. carpals, carpals are your, your fingers. Yeah. Uh, which famous prison was known as the Rock? That should be pretty easy. Oh, good try. Anyone watch that movie, The Rock? Yeah, that was a good movie. Yep. I thought Sean Connery did a, a very, very good um, uh, impersonation of Sean Connery. <laughs> <laughs> because every yeah. film he's in, he plays himself. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Does it very, uh, and did it very well, I have to say. <laughs> okay, Kylo Ren is a villain in which film series? I think I think the peanuts should some of the peanuts out there are nerdy enough to know that one. Take that stupid mask off. Yeah. Oh, Carl Carl popped the post on that one. How are we going for time? <laughs> Filming says one ping only. <laughs> Something's in here. Don't react well to bullets. <laughs> that that is a classic <laughs> film. I, I mean, it, it it's it, some of it hasn't aged very well, but it is totally yeah. Uh, one ping, Shelley. One ping only. And uh, and uh, it, it Sean Connery. It, every film you watch him in, he's Sean Connery. Mm -hmm. yeah, it doesn't matter what character he's playing. He's this he's this bloke with a Scottish accent. Which they sometimes tried to pass off as Irish. I think they did that in the Untouchables, wasn't it? He was supposed to be a, an Irish copper or something. But yeah. Hell, the furthest out of character you ever got was in the uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark stuff. Oh, that's right. And 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 he's 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 playing Matey Boy's father, and they're only yeah. about what, yeah. five or six years apart. Or yeah. something. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. What is John Logie? But he was a little. Sorry, please. He was a little different in those in those films. Mm. What was? Oh, he's sorry, farmer. Go no, go for it. Go for it. What is John Logie Baird credited with inventing? Uh, um, I think yeah, we TV? know what it is. Yeah, yeah TV. Uh, TV, wasn't it? <laughs> Jeez, how did they get the answers out there before I asked the question? I <laughs> guess there ain't much lag on this stream then. Yeah. yeah Carl, Carl got that one. It's not the traditional 30 seconds, is it? Mm. I'd like to know what it is. Carl's Hang on, let me try some of Come on, come on. No, there is still quite a lag. Well, how the come on, how's come the chat on. getting that then? I don't know. Un unless some of us are getting more lag than others. Yeah. No more. Clive says there's a huge lag. Yeah, there was for me as well. It, it was at least 20 seconds. I mean, I gave That's up. usually yeah. average, the 20 seconds. Yeah. And, yeah, my, my stream is... My stream's up to date. Let's have a look. Yeah, yeah it's up to date. So who'd, who'd said Tully? Carl, I think Carl was the first. <laughs> Carl goes, I'm closer to 
Oz than anyone else. <laughs> Not only sure it works like that, but you never know. What type of animal is seen on the Lamborghini logo? It's not happy. <laughs> <laughs> Clive goes liver. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's out of a lag. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that I, I gained a certain satisfaction when Clarkson did his, his um, first series of, of Clarkson's Farm. And he went out and bought a Lamborghini tractor because that's what Lamborghini started out doing, didn't he? Mm. He was making tractors before he started making supercars. So, of course, Clarkson buys, goes out and buys the biggest bloody tractor he can find, a Lamborghini, and, of course, it don't fit in the barn. Now, this answer to this question, you either you know it or you don't, like straight off the top of your head. And the delay out in the peanuts is going to be the thing too, so... How many minutes are in a day? Without Googling it. <laughs> <laughs> I know how many minutes are in an hour, and it's like, shit, what's that time's 24? <laughs> Who's the first person to get it out there? I think Truth Nerds was. What, in a day? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was thinking seconds. Because yeah. I'm always having to convert hours to seconds when I'm sizing that work. What did Yuri Gagarin do? I wouldn't know what that one oh, was. Oh, yeah, what did <laughs> he do? <laughs> what did he do? He was a bit what? of a space cadet, wasn't he? He was a bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> space man. At least he did it properly as well. Not none of this suborbital nonsense. Mm. Elmig said he died. Died in a plane crash. What's Tiny Captain saying? 1436? What? Sidereal day. In <laughs> fact, he's gone. I'm lagging so much. I'm getting last week's questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice one. <sighs> Who did James Earl Ray assassinate? Oh, yeah. Martin Luther King. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Actually, Clive Wells makes a good point about um, Gagarin. First man to survive re-entry from orbit. <clears throat> good point. Film is the sequel to Finding Nemo. Oh, yeah. uh, the secret to good sushi? <laughs> Somebody probably know it out there. I don't know. I haven't watched any of them. 
Not my uh, sort of animated film, I'm afraid. This luxury car brand has the Trident on its logo. Oh, um, Trident, that's... Um... Yeah, that one. No, it's gone. It's gone? I, um, it's Italian. It begins with M, doesn't it? Yeah. It's just... Hang on, it's on tip me tongue. Uh, no, can't see it. Oh, how frustrating is that? I must be having a senior moment. <laughs> And what's cool? Well, a few of them got finding door pretty easy. Oh, in fact, he did. Oh. Maserati, thank you very much. That's the one. <laughs> Dave helped you. I, just, I couldn't bloody remember it. You, you know, you just get a total mental block and think, I know it. But... Yeah. Okay, that'll do you for now. That was good. That was, that was yeah, that was a good mix of questions, isn't it? At least we didn't get a lot of doubles. Not too many, anyway. No. Got at least one double, didn't you? I did skip a couple here and there, just for whatever reason. <laughs> Mascarpone. No, that's cheese. <laughs> Very nice, too. Yeah, right. Yeah, I believe you, Carl. Uh, give me a minute. I've got a couple of things I've got to do. Fair enough. Oh, that is, that's getting warmer. Any peanuts got any interesting questions? <laughs> we got some, we got an asterisk, asterisk reader out there. Irish stew. Rhubarb, rhubarb, rhubarb. Oh, I got accused yesterday of using a voice changer, which was a very bizarre moment. I was I was hanging out in Gems, and, and Mr. Mabbit asked me if I used a voice changer. I was like, "What are you on about? Use a voice changer?" So so he, he he posted the little sound clip, and I think it was one of the Blues Hangouts from last week when the, the Rumpus was there, and obviously Bev likes to review Blues Hangouts, you know, in in meticulous detail. And they, they, he, he got the sound clip of me doing Bev's voice. <laughs> but I don't think they realised I was doing an impression of Bev. Yeah. Because they yeah. made some comment about, oh, is, that, is, that, is, is that Farmer's boy? <laughs> but, but, <laughs> I, but, uh, no, that, oh, that was, that, that was Farmer's boy. <laughs> and then one of the other Herbert sort of said, oh, he must be using a voice changer. <laughs> but but I I don't need the voice change to say that level is horizontal. Oh, uh, no, you don't. But bro, I was going, oh, you must use a voice change. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I 
don't think any of them tweaked that I was taking the piss out of Bev. <laughs> But, but I have to speak with 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 constant tone of incredulity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bit bit like you Aussies when the end of every sentence is a question. No, but not all that's, of us. Not all of no, us. No, but like that. Uh, uh, um, yeah, that that is one mm. of the stere- one of the stereotypes that you you always you know end a sentence with a question. Uh, and, but that's Bev and his incredulity. He, he, he's just constantly really. I don't know what young about. Yeah, you know, <laughs> they just missed it completely. I mean, it's not the best impression in the world, but it's just something about that god awful nasal twang of his. Oh yeah, I was like, you use a voice changer. What the fucking hell are you on about? Voice changer. Yeah, because you know, I, I need that for when I want to change his voice. Go hello. No, you, you, you're safe, Carl. Bev, Bev, Bev isn't here. Not, not really. But can I just say that the level is? How is that? Oh. Yeah, be careful. Alan's going to grab that one day and use it as a sound bite. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I mean, when, when Bev's heard me doing it and, and uh, yeah, is either hasn't realised or is pretending that he hasn't realised that I'm taking the piss out of him, then, you know. Oh, why'd you say that? Oh. Now all I need is, is to grab a, a funny little goatee, get the silly hat, get the, get the Bill and Men hat, and have a pipe that's about that long. Oh, use that to point. I need a whiteboard. That's what it is. I need a whiteboard. Did oh, you cover your books up? Yeah, no, 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 I couldn't do that. I ain't gone to all this effort to hide it. Look at that. Level is horizontal. You're right, <laughs> it is. Level, level is horizontal. Level is horizontal. Yep, yeah, you're leaning against an open door here, mate, yeah. yeah. Can't, can't argue with that one. <laughs> oh, dear. That was nice, that, huh? wasn't it? <laughs> hey, hey, Blue, Blue, I've seen the elevations. Have you? Oh, we need, believe, the, we need the straight line. It's got a 90 degree bend in it. I couldn't believe what he said to Blue. I've seen the elevations. Have you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Oh dear. That was nicer, have you, eh? <laughs> have, you seen, have you seen the old oh you mean the ones I wrote down here? No, I had my eyes closed <laughs> when I typed that. But the, the, the ones that you did in your videos about LIGO and, and, and showed us where to get them and if you do a quick Google search, there they are. <laughs> uh, have, have you seen them? Have you? Have you seen them? <laughs> Yeah, that's what happens I'm when dying, you're Abby. Stuck. <laughs> totally stuck. <laughs> yes, Clive, with the whiteboard, I could be the new Lindsay. I'll just go out and get a frontal lobotomy now, shall I? <laughs> Wait. Oh, God. <laughs> could you just imagine the product of Lindsay and Bev? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, please, no. Oh, oh, the horror, the horror. <laughs> the horizontal tropical gap. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What do you mean, Carl? It's nice that, wasn't it? I'm going to have to behave myself so much when we do this bloody Bedford level thing because they will turn up Mm. and I think I'll have to say to Rumpus put me on the far station get me well away from this bloody bridge (laughs) because I shall get myself in trouble I suspect I have done a flat earth experiment (laughs) from Denmark 
I watched it earlier on and I haven't got a bloody clue <laughs> what was going on. <laughs> yeah, it's the same videos again with his plastic sheet that he rolls up. I still can't work I mean, out his argument with what he's going on about. I don't, don't think he knows. I'll grab that one again. I thought that was Bev is still trying that to one. Sorry, please. Bev's still trying to say that uh, the day they showed up when uh, you guys were down there mm -hmm. was just coincidental. Bollocks. Yeah. That exactly. had been planned um, quite some time previously. Yeah. It was going to be the day. That's yeah. why they all turned up because Mabbit was asking us. Oh, is, 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 is it this weekend? Is it this weekend? You know? Oh, yeah. But yesterday, Bev was still maintaining that uh, they just happened to show up on the same day that you guys were there. No, I, I don't believe in coincidences. <laughs> Certainly not ones as big as that. Yeah, he was going after this guy. Uh, I can science that. Hmm. And... Uh, that came up some, well, apparently, I think, I think that, that, that guy was down there that day. Maybe he was part of you, your crowd. I can science that. Um, I can't think of what his name is. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Cause there, there, there was, there was a chap who turned up at least one of the times that I was there. He was part of the. There's a local skeptics group, the Cambridge Skeptics Group or something. He turned up to help and he was there all day. But sort of me and Rumpus were on one station and he was sort of down the bank another couple of miles or so. Um, it could have been him. Mm, yeah, I, I'm not sure. Don't know. Anyway. Don't know. So I left Bev a little love note and asked him how long he's going to try to maintain that charade. Everybody knows. There was nothing coincidental about that. No. Uh, and of course, he went, on a, went on another one of his tirades again, which he does just about every day, of, about how uh, how they're not flat earthers. And mm -hmm. I'm getting sick of hearing that. I really am. Just ask them what they, what they think the shape of the earth is. Yeah. And they'll struggle to provide you with an answer. And that tells you all you need to know. They're flat earthers. Yeah. You're anyway. seriously going to sit there and tell me that le that you believe level is horizontal, but you don't think the Earth is flat? Yeah. What? Uh, anyone for me to me that questions the the shape of the Earth is the person that has to be in the flat Earth camp. Well, unless you're one of the very, very, very small percentage of people who are concave Earthers, but they're few and far between. Mm. It is generally it's either it's either it's either a ball or it's flat. Uh, and and Bev from day one was a flat earther. You know, he had all his research flat earth stickers on everything. And and yeah. he's tried he's trying to change his 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 story because like a lot of them, they don't like what goes with being labelled a flat earther. Yeah, but levels are so, But yeah, I know. I, I know. Oh. I I just don't want to get on there and try to explain to them what level means because they go yeah but that's not what it says in the dictionary yeah but that's only part of the definition. They will pull up just part, just the bits that the, the first chunk of definitions that suits them yeah. and then they avoid like the plague the bit where it says you know conforms with the curvature of the earth blah 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 they yeah. no don't show that one yeah. show all the others but not that one not that one. And did you Google what a line is? Because that's what they wanted you to. Well, that was Travis, wasn't it? Mm. Well, I get that mixed up. Oh, just don't yesterday in Jose's, Mister Leaky came in and 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 he was he was asking he was asking Lael, I think it was Lael and um, <coughs> oh the Scottish one whose name has just gone out of my head. Um, what are variables? And why do we have them in science? Why do we have variables in the scientific experiment? It's like, I just sort of said, I've challenged you to do a scientific experiment without variables. Good luck with that one. I mean, the, the, the questions are so malformed that everybody's sort of sitting there going, huh, what? Hey, uh, 
how do I answer that? Mm. <laughs> What's a variable? Why why do we have variables? <laughs> yeah, I was on um yeah. one debate there talking I'm sure it was on um GAs or was it one of the others. And they're talking about star rotation and I said, Well on a flat earth, the star rotation if it was at the North Pole wouldn't have the same axis as what we see in reality looking towards the North Pole. Have you seen, can you prove that or can you show that or something, or whatever his thing mm. was? Is there a battle to it? In all fairness, farmers, Lael can generate questions that are absolutely as malformed as any flat I, earth. I, I know. I know he can. Well he's, he's he's as equally good as lobbing a grenade into the middle of a conversation as anyone else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see Lyle coming in and I think, oh my God. I like Lyle. I mean, he's yeah. a nice guy. But he mixes he the is. Pot, but, mixes but, the Jesus, God. He is going to destroy this and he always does. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. I'm, is it I'm your Copernicus? Who's is, is that guy? That's Travis. That's Travis. Travis. Yeah. 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 I think it was Travis that I was talking to. That, that's Travis and his ego. Yeah. I'm your Copernicus. N no. You're, you're just another madman on the internet. Yeah, it's a very sad case, that one. He really thinks he's discovering shit, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I've got 101 alternative explanations for why things go over the horizon. But the Earth's not curved. Yeah. Yeah. I was just scrolling through the discords to see what he's about. I've got videos ready. A bunch of them here. Where'd Blue's video go? <laughs> That's what I was looking for. Did I get that one? That one? Yeah, yeah, I got blues one. Flatsoids talk debacle. Oh, flatsoid. I got that one. Got one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I got ended up with seven choices. A couple of Antons. Did China really create a human brain level AI computer? Who knows what those clever little fellows are up to? Flat Earth to debunk obstruction, Everett Anderson. Another Anton, strange supernova where a star survived and even became brighter, but nobody knows why. Uh, Simon's the most ridiculous discovery I've ever seen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, blues, flat, oh, we already said that one. Oh, oh, and Dem and Demox flat earth experiments from Everett. <coughs> I could always swap that he's one, a, we all know what that one is. He's a strange fellow. He is very strange. I, I <laughs> Jem was in yesterday afternoon and, so, and somebody, uh, somebody said, why is Demick muted? And he went, what do you mean, why is Demick? He said, <laughs> what do you mean, right. why? That's a silly question. All right, then. I'll unmute him for exactly five minutes. Mm. And, and and he did. Yeah. Uh, and then when he said, right, that's your five minutes up, and he muted him. And he yeah. like to say, oh, I mean, those five minutes went bloody quick because it was just Demick going. Nah, 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 nah. No, 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 no. No, he doesn't, have a, doesn't like streaming. having a conversation for some weird reason. No. And it's like, there you go. Well, that's why Demick's muted all the time. Oh, I'll put Simon's up there. Are bulls really angered by the colour red? Yeah, I might not play the long ones. I might give them a few skips. I'll do Simon. Blue, Everett, 
and sight man. Yeah, that'll do me this week. That's the short list. Did you read um, Paul's um, thumbnail that he's got for his picture? What? Do not breathe under the water? Yeah. I wish I could. <laughs> oh, hang on a minute. I'd, I'd, I'd be like um, Kevin Costner and have gills. Mm. <laughs> how, 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 how did a human develop gills that quickly? Interesting. Yeah. Strange film, though. Made the mistake of watching that at the cinema. <laughs> All that bloody water after an hour, it's like, it's no good. I've got to go for a pee. <laughs> <laughs> Too much water. You see, back then, films generally weren't that long. And then all of a sudden, there seemed to be a whole glut of them. I mean, I made the mistake of watching JFK at the cinema. That went on for three hours. And, and of course, they, they keep repay... Re they represent the, the main theme of the film over and over again to make sure everybody's got it. And I'm sitting there thinking, I wish I could fast forward through this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get the idea. Get on with it, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, you know, uh, like cinemas aren't generally the most comfortable places to be sat still for three hours because the chairs, the seats aren't very good and there's not much leg room and there's, there's, there's idiots all around you sort of chomping away and, and talking and pissing about on their phones. No, I don't like going to the cinema anymore, to be honest. Last one time I went to the cinema when I was younger, I remember watching something that was a bit of a comedy type thing, and, and I could hear people laughing at times in the through the movie, and I'm thinking, that bit wasn't funny. <laughs> oh, the the funniest one for that, I think I took the lads when they were quite, quite young. I think I think it was the first Shrek film. And other than the fact that there was a birthday party in there, so you've got this, this group of unruly kids and the parents just couldn't keep control of them at all. But there are certain points, and it's one of those films where there's, there's jokes for the kids and there's jokes for the adults. And when it got to the jokes for the adults, all of us adults are laughing. You can look around and all, most of the kids all go, they're either just deadpan because it's past them by the gun. Huh? What's funny about that? I thought, yeah, yeah when you're older. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind when they do that in films. What's the name of the the king that was on the horse? Um, I can't boat. remember. It's too long ago. Farqua. Oh, uh, Farqua. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, King Farqua. They're torturing the gingerbread man. I seem to remember. <laughs> yeah. That was quite, yeah. There, there, was, there was some good humour in it, yeah. But. There were one or two films. It, it was like, oh, kids, you want to go see that, don't you? Because I wanted to go see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, any movie that has to explain itself has failed. That's it. Yes, watch the proper version of Blade Runner without Harrison Ford doing the narration. It's much better. You shouldn't need somebody trying to explain the film to you as you're watching it. No. I'll just put it up, Carl. <laughs> Give <him> a bloody <laughs> chance. <laughs> I was just letting you finish your sentence while I've had it already. Yeah. Uh, impatient lot, these peanuts. Okay. 
I'd be alright if I could hear it. Oh yeah, yeah, unmute the old boy. Really angered by the colour red. When it comes to bullfighting, we always see the same thing, don't we? Whether it's in a cartoon, a TV show, or a movie. And that is, no matter what is happening, the matador will always have a red cape, otherwise known as a muleta. But contrary to popular belief, the bull doesn't actually care for the colour red, and it certainly doesn't anger it. In fact, they can't even see the colour red. Bulls have dichromatic vision, which means they can only see variation and mixtures of only two different colours. And those colours are blue and yellow, so the world would look pretty much like this to a bull. Which means a red cape will look more yellowish grey to them. So the question is, what is it that makes the bull angry? The swinging movement of the red muleta and the gesticulations of the matador is what actually angers the bull. Once the bull is significantly aggravated by all of this, it will go into fight mode and it's game on. The main reason that the matador uses the colour red for its cape is to mask the bull's blood and of course for pomp and tradition. So there we go. Next time that someone says a bull is angered by the colour red, you can step in and say they can't even see the colour red. I've been Simon Dan. This has been another Misconception Mini and I'll see you next time. Subscribe here, definitely click that one, 100% click that one uh, and then more videos there. De I mean click that one as well if you want. I mean they're there so you may as well click them. Uh, that one's quite good. Yeah, the bull's more pissed off that there's some crap prance about in front of him and keeps stabbing him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I think I'd be much ashamed, to be honest. Don't, <laughs> don't give a toss about what colour it is. <laughs> uh, okay. <coughs> okay, who hasn't seen Blue's Flat Sides Talk debacle? Oh, no, I haven't. It, it, I, I watched it over breakfast this morning. Oh, uh, but I, I, I have no problem watching it again. Okay. See that blue? I think blue's <laughs> gone able. Oh, yeah, I'm here. I hear you there. Farmer okay. said he's got no problem watching it twice. Hmm. It may, it may, it may hurt your brain. Well, it, it, it's, it's a risk I'm willing to take. <laughs> Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Blue Marble Science. Flatsoid gets all confused about torque and, well, Houston, we've had a problem. Warning, get out those oven mitts, push the monitors back out of punching range, and let's light this dumpster fire and have some... I've done a video on that. Do what? Fun. Fixed it. Flatzoid has <laughs> made a video about the Cavendish experiment. And Flatzoid is absolutely certain that he's figured out what really makes those masses attract each other. Yeah? Now, really? Now, this video that he made doesn't have any audio with it. So I'll just give you a description of what he's saying. And you can stop the video anytime you want to if you want to read his slides. He starts out by saying it's just torque. Well, you know he's right about that, but he's going to get something really wrong here in a few minutes. He goes on in the early part of the video to explain why the Cavendish experiment is not valid. He says it's because Cavendish assumed that gravity existed and Cavendish assumed the Earth was a sphere. Well, you know, even in 1798, everybody was pretty sure gravity existed. You can see things accelerate toward the Earth at 9.81 meters per second squared. That's easy to measure. In 1798, you could look through a telescope and see the moons of Jupiter orbiting that planet. And if you build a torsion balance, you can watch the science. small masses being attracted to the large ones. So that's a pretty good assumption, I think. The next problem Flatzoid identifies is the fact that Cavendish assumed the Earth was spherical with a particular diameter. Well, you know, even in 1798, 
we had already measured the diameter of the Earth pretty accurately. What Cavendish used was a diameter of 41,800,000 feet. Today, the average diameter that we use is 41,804,000 feet. That's a difference of about one part in 10,000. So that's pretty close, I think. Then Flatsoid asserts that Cavendish assumed that gravity was the only cause of the movement of the torsion balance, which isn't true. Cavendish went to a lot of trouble to test for and eliminate the possibility of magnetic effects that could be influencing the experiment. He also did testing to see what effect temperature variation would have if one side of the case was heated and the other side was not because that produces a circulating air current and that itself will affect the amount of deflection you see in the balance. So Flatzoid concludes the experiment is pseudoscience even though we know better. But then he plays a clip from Richard Feynman and I really like this clip and it's got audio so I think I'll play that for you. The idea was to hang by a very very fine quartz fiber a rod with two balls and then put two large lead balls in the positions indicated here next to it on the side. Then because of the attraction of the balls there would be a slight twist of the fiber. It had to be done so delicately because the gravitational force between ordinary things is very very tiny indeed and there it was and it was possible then to measure the force between these two balls. Cavendish called his experiment weighing the earth we're pedantic and careful today. We wouldn't let our students say that. We would have to say they're measuring the mass of the Earth. You know? But the reason he say that, said that is the following. By a direct experiment, he was able to measure the force and the two masses and the distance and thus determine the gravitational constant. You say, yes, but we have the same situation on the Earth. We know what the pull is, and we know what the mass of the object pulled is, and we know how far away we are. But we don't know them either the mass of the Earth or the constant, but only the combination. So by measuring the constant and knowing the facts about the pull of the Earth, the mass of the Earth could be determined. So indirectly, this experiment was the first determination of how heavy or how massive is the ball on which we stand. I said it's a kind of an amazing achievement to find that out, and I think that's why Cavendish named his experiment that way instead of determining the constant in the gravitational equation weighing the earth. Oh. <laughs> he incidentally was weighing the sun and everything else at the same time. <laughs> because the pull of the sun is known in the same manner. Of course, Cavendish determined the density of the earth. He didn't weigh the earth. But I suspect Feynman said it that way just to make the talk a little more interesting. It's largely an issue of semantics. Now Flatsoid is going to try to tell us what really makes the torsion balance move and he's going to get this tragically wrong. He says if you get the demonstration to work then what causes the movement? There are many reasons to show it's not gravity and only the simple mechanics behind the demonstration. First we start with the lead balls. They're very dense and thus will be heavy. This weight load on the rod and string acts as a force. This is because the air around the balls cannot support the weight. What happens when you place a force at a distance? You get torque and then Flatzoid asks, what is torque? And he goes on to say torque is the rotational equivalent of linear force. And this is a curious way to say it. He says the moment of force in the linear causes a rotational force. That's pretty awkward wording, but English isn't Flatzoid's first language, so we'll let him get away with that. Now he shows a cartoon that seems to indicate a pivot point in the center, an arm with a mass on the end of it, a distance which would be the green arrow that you see there, and a force applied to that mass which would be the red arrow. That would result in a torque vector that is shown as the yellow arrow, Next we see this animation that comes straight out of Wikipedia and it's simply showing the relationship between the force vector and the torque vector. The red vector you see there is the position vector that you see in those two formulas. Then Flatzoid shows the Wikipedia torque formula 
which simply says that torque is the vector cross product of the position vector and the force vector. He doesn't try to make any explanation for what any of this means, and I think it's probably because he doesn't know what it means. And now we have the grand finale where Flatzoid concludes that we have established that density creates a force and the torque moves the balls. We see it's just density in action. Thank you, Cavendish. Uh, this is Houston. Uh, say again, please. Houston, we have a problem. I'll say we've got a problem. Mm. Flatzoid, what you just said doesn't make any sense at all. This is an actual Cavendish torsion balance. I've highlighted the suspension wires and the torsion wire in red. You can see the balance beam there at the blue arrow. There are two weights hanging from each end of that balance beam. They're equal in weight and they are exactly the same distance from the torsion wire. You know, there's a reason we call these things a torsion balance. They're balanced. Yeah. There is no torque as the thing just sits there. Now, let me give you an example of torque. This is torque on the left. It's actually a force acting at a distance. You see a lever arm there that's attached to a pivot point on the right with a mass or a force on the left. That produces a torque which tries to rotate the lever arm in a counterclockwise direction. So this is torque. On the right, we see a balance beam. It has equal masses hanging on both ends of it and it is suspended from a torsion wire. There is no torque in this system. The only way we get torque in that torsion wire is to rotate the beam in a horizontal plane. So let's talk about torque for a second. Torque obeys the right hand rule. If we pick a point, a pivot point for instance, and we point our index finger in the direction of the lever arm, We'll let the length of that vector r be the length of the arm. The middle finger of our right hand points in the direction of the force that's being applied. We'll call the angle between the lever arm and the force theta. What we really want is the area of that parallelogram. So torque is the vector cross product of the length of the lever arm and the force being applied to it. That's simply the length of the arm times the magnitude of the force times the sine of the angle between the force and the arm. And that results in the torque vector, which is in the direction of our right thumb. That's all there is to it. So again, torque, no torque. And the only way we can have torque is to rotate that balance beam in the horizontal plane. Now this is what happens with the torsion balance. We have a mass M1 hanging from that balance beam. And when we move a large mass close to the small mass, there'll be an apparent force of attraction between those two masses. That causes the balance beam to rotate and that is what results in the torque that we measure. This is how we calculate the universal gravitational constant. So you think you got it now, Flatzoid? Boy, I hope so. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit those little buttons down there. There's a link to the Patreon and the PayPal. I'll have those in the description as well. And I'll see you guys on the next one. I don't know how many times I go into um, into conversations and I hear somebody mention and similar to this. I just don't get it.
I think I've got a more of an understanding of it than the Flat Earth is one because I watched Blue build it from scratch so I watched each every component and worked out what it was doing as it was getting built so yeah that helps and once it all came together it made sense I I think half the problem is that they they they've all they've they've spent too much time and effort pushing their 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 bullshit excuses that they just have to stay with them you know because the one thing they can't do is is change their tune or or god forbid admit that they were wrong Well, the flat earther be wrong. Well, exactly, because that never happens, does it? Flat earth is never wrong. Yeah. And they usually just veer away from something what they in a conversation straight away, they move the goalpost or whatever. Oh, yeah. I mean they're they're, they're all experts at it, it changing the subject, distracting, you know. I um, there were some bloody politicians, I think. Hmm. Well, it's really not terribly hard to see what what's happening with the cabinet device. It's pretty obvious. Yeah. Press play, Terry. <laughs> want to teach something really simple. This is a incredibly easy way to verify the shape of our world. Oh, we're doing this again. <laughs> Bang, confetti saved up. <laughs> this is basic, basic, basic stuff. And uh, I want to teach you. I taught it to my boys and they understand this. Wait, that's not good news at all. The, the easiest way <laughs> for somebody to understand flat earth I think, is that we can see too far. It makes you think. No, it doesn't. Okay, the globe is is a globe, okay? Meaning there are limits to how far you can see before the curvature of the Earth starts to make things disappear. Okay? And that's what they tell us. They tell us ships disappear over the ocean. That's, that's how you know, because you'll see the mass disappear last as they go out of view. So, is that true or is that not true? There's nothing I would rather do than just stand here and chat with you. So at one mile, you're gonna lose eight inches of elevation. So just let that sink in. So let's, let's jump to 10 miles, okay? 66.6 .6 feet of, of elevation loss over 10 mile span. Wow. There is a, um, there's some footage and this guy captures the Chicago skyline, 59 miles away. Well, Lordy frickin' God! And you can pick out every building. You can see the lights on the buildings. You can see, you can see them in perfect clarity, the whole skyline. I don't think so. You're seeing the Chicago skyline and they're telling you, you are actually seeing up and over and down. A mirage, a superior mirage, they say. Dear God, there's more. No. If that fits into your brain, you've successfully been mind controlled. You have been, you have seen the globe one too many times. You have, you have trusted CGI images, Freemasons. You've trusted a satanic uh, plan to to war against the Bible. That's, that's horrible. Yeah. Okay. This is not true the the earth is not curved it is a flat plane it's immovable it's still and it's at rest the bible tells us what we live on <laughs> i gotta agree with you that think, you, yep. you can watch yeah. the ship go out of view to your visual eye out of view and you, you'd see it disappear, just like they, they said. Okay, you so visualize. Can you see a ship go over the horizon with your naked eye? Then you take out a, a telescoping lens and you my eyes zoom in on that. Okay? I don't know if I could do it with me without glass, without a, some sort of. Uh, I'll just take my glasses off. I, I, I can't see a bloody thing now. No, okay. Yes, you can zoom on. Empty skyline, zoom in on a, on a ship. 
And all of a sudden you bring that thing back into view and you see the water lapping at the hull. That's a lie. That's a what? I said that's a lie. That's a word I take from no man. So this is it. Um, simple. You can go to any body of water. Um, they do this in Utah all the time. They do this uh, on the lakes. You can do it on the ocean. There's, you can prove this. You can start here and go, wait a second, hold on. If, if we're on a curve, how can I see through water? Am I totally surrounded by stupid people? <laughs> the answer, of course, is yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that boy Everett. <laughs> Imagine that yet another flurf that doesn't know the difference between drop and hidden. Once again, I am aghast that they can't get this simple concept and that there is a difference. You know, that famous photograph that Key they always talk about with Chicago was taken from a place called Warren Dunes. Oh, yes. Yes. And I've been there. And those sand dunes are about uh, 200 feet uh, tall above the, above the lake level. No, big big dunes then. Yeah, they're they're big damn yeah. And they're yeah. dangerous too. You need to be careful. People have been swallowed up in those damn things. I, I can imagine, but, yeah. Yeah. But uh yeah, I've been I've been there, been up on, on top of those things. Uh so you're looking at uh, you're looking across fifty nine miles of water at the Chicago skyline, and even on a day with normal refraction, you're gonna see the tops of the buildings. Hmm. And if you've got an extreme case of uh, refraction, a severe refracted day, it's going to be a lot more that you'll see too. So it's not uncommon to be able to see this Chicago skyline from there. I yeah. did a hell of a lot of work uh, uh, for in the Northern Indiana Public Service Commission or uh, NIPSCO. Public service company is what I meant to say. Hmm. And they had a power generating station in Michigan City, which is just not too many miles south of uh, Warren Dunes. You're still a good, you know, 55 miles or so away from downtown Chicago. And I've gone out to that lake many, many, many times, looked across there and seen the tops of the building and then gone up to the roof of the boiler house, which is 250 feet. Yep. <laughs> and seen most of the skyline. So, uh, all this horseshit they come up with about that observation is just that horseshit. Yeah. Well, it's all they've got is horseshit, yeah. you know, it, and, and I'm, I'm fairly certain that most of them know it as well. That's the only image I think I've got for that. That's the one you're talking about. I have to see if I can get the proper image for it. <coughs> Is that the skyline they're talking about? That, I don't know if that's from. I don't know where that came from. Yeah, that's it. I'll see if I can get a good image of it one day. That's the Willis Tower there in the center. Oh, peanuts probably can't see what I'm showing. Uh, yeah, look at that old sun just fading away to nothing. Um, Oh, here's your last one for today.
most ridiculous discoveries he say. You should yeah, do it. Okay, you dudes. It's Roger. Mud Fossil University. What you're looking here is oh, the tail <laughs> of a dragon. Well, Roger is back this week as he walks us through the scorpion dragon fossil that has been found, apparently, which he is naming Scorpzilla. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tin Four Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a huge thank you to the sponsors of today's video. What's that, Paul? I didn't say anything. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I thought somebody said something. I said uh, you wait until you see what it actually is. <laughs> Raycon. Raycon's everyday earbuds really do look, feel and sound better than ever. They're just to get 15% off your first purchase. Right, back to today's video where Roger from Mud Fossil University has found Scorpzilla. Okay, my outstanding friends, you might as well sit down now because you shall be on the floor momentarily. <laughs> oh, you don't get much more of a stronger opening than that. Don't let us down, Roger. This is a Scorpzilla. And this is a Scorpzilla's eye. And Scorpzilla runs all the way, a long ways. This is where his shoulder begins. Let's back out from Scorpzilla. Of course, this is his face. And most dragons have a big bump on their nose, which Scorpy does. It will be interesting to see the scale he's talking about here. Let's find out. And he runs all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way, until his scorpion tail becomes evident back here. So the entire west coast of the North American continent. Right. Um, just so I've got this right. The entire west coast of North America is the ancient remains of a giant scorpion dragon. Okay. That's his scorpion tail. Now, what happened to his scorpion tail when he died? Well, it seems to have a little ejecta. You see that? This is like ejecta juice. So venom then, ejecta juice. <laughs> Unless ejecta juice is a scorpzilla term, then of course I apologize. Coming out of the scorpzilla's tail. Now, you see how this is like, scorpzilla. And, and then it's exactly perfectly heighted and this drops down a mile or more. We're up here, we're at minus 3,500 feet approximately. Here, we're at minus 10,700 feet. So it's over a mile deep from here to there. That's how big Scorpzilla's Scorp is. Now, so let's follow his tail all the way back. So we got Scorpzilla's tail going back, going back, all the way up his body, all his whatever feathers or f f wings or whatever, all the way up to Scorpzilla's head, which is up here, and Scorpzilla's eye, which is here, and his bumpy nose, which is there. Now, huh? let's take a look at his digestive system, because anything that lives has to have a digestive system. And the crazy thing is, my name is Spur, <laughs> and his anus is also named Mount Spur. <laughs> Well, that's enough for me, Roger. But seriously, <laughs> are we supposed to believe that a giant scorpion dragon the size of a continent used to live on Earth? Where would it have lived exactly? And you talk about the yeah, digestive system eat? and what would it have eaten? What would yeah. be big enough for it to eat? That right there is literally a rectum. That mountain right there is <laughs> literally a rectum, is it? Are you sure about that? Rectum? How does this man get dressed in the morning? Uh, all right. This right here. His carries do it for if him. You, let me move this a little bit so that it makes a little more... Well, it's good enough. You see this? This is the, the tube coming straight out. It literally is a tube. A what now? You see the tube? This here, here, is here, it's rolling over the top of the tube. This is, um, this is just more, um, you know, uh, shadow. But this is the architecture of that tube. It runs right up there, just like a cannon shooting out of here. And when this thing goes off, it sp spits all its goop 
down into here. The fact they get sound effects is just amazing. <laughs> right there. And it, to me, look, I think to me, it looks like every time it pooped, it made another oh, one of these dear. squirters. <laughs> really? You know, this is like in the side of your intestines, you have these little pinchers that pinch it and squirt it out. And that is coming right out of Mount Spur. And all of this is right at the end of its digestive system. You see these colors? Whenever you see colors like this, and all these different little lakey colors, you are in a digestive system. I wouldn't tell that to the local swimmers down there, Roger, though. <laughs> and, that, and then you have to try to figure it out from there. But it will always end up pooping out somewhere. And there it is right there, and there's the poop. Mm. All right, so now, that was just the start well, of the day. Here. All right, so don't no. forget, this is the newly found Scorpzilla. And there's his head right up here. Now, I've got a tag over here because I was looking at the Colorado River. Now, this Scorpzilla is a very, very, very large creature, as all the giant dragons were, basically, now. Okay, but oh, yeah. how did all these giant dragons live on Earth? Must have been a bit crowded. Where am all right, so that's pretty good right there. Now, what do we have here? Scorpzilla's head is over here. All right, that's the west coast of the United States. Now, what, what did I peg here? Where do you see this? This I found very interesting. Because somebody was asking me, a friend of mine, um, to look at some things out in this area. And I know that the Colorado River is in desperate trouble. And I can tell you what. This is, again, these are digestive systems. Now, I don't know if these... The Earth is actually literally a living creature, and all this water and everything is running out of it, like veins and, and arteries and so forth, and it's, we're killing the Earth, which we are, fracking and all this stuff. They're, they're, they're killing the Earth, no question of it whatsoever. If it was alive, it's not much longer for this world. The Earth will be fine, Roger. It's us poor humans are the ones who are in trouble. Now, yep. so wh where are we going to look? We want to look at this Colorado River, and wh where did it come from? Where the hell did Colorado start? Well, the Colorado source is surprisingly in Colorado at La Poudre Pass Lake. This is well known. So I'm going up back and back and I get it to this area up here. And I say, well, you know, it's a pretty good amount of water. And you see the different colors? Something's squirting out some other wrong, crazy color. You got this crazy color up here. This is all digestive system as well. Now, I believe this is the reabsorptive area that is pulling back waters from body tissues which is exactly what happens in your rectum and so forth now changes in water color on google earth usually pick, depict changes in depth with the lighter blue showing uh, more shallower water where did it come from well we can see there's a lot of biological really good stuff right here in just one exact spot exact spot you see this out here you're not going to grow anything right there i don't think Everything's doing fine here, and it, with a little bitty trickle coming through here. This is not natural. Just an actual, you know, the wind blew that like that way. No, it didn't. That is biological. That has got something to do with absorption. And these are absorbing fluids that, like in your intestines, you have absorptive areas where they absorb back things that would normally be flushed out of you. And we've got one absorption area over here and one over here. Roger seems to think that most of the Earth has biological features. Unfortunately, you can't just say that that looks biological and then believe it. You need to supply evidence to suggest it, experimentation, etc. And of course, Roger has done none of that. Let's pop to the end of the video where Roger has one more gem for us. Okay, my friends, this is going to be another one of those stunners. You see that? Yeah, it looks like somebody painted green on there. He said, oh, no, 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 that's just a reflection. No, it is not. No, 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 it is not. It is carpeted with green, and then it has sloughed off this edge here and slid down. Yes, grass on a mountain which gradually erodes into the sea. Not a hard one, that. This, my friends, is about as green, mossy as you can get. And every time I talk to you guys, I say, if you see green moss, that was growing on fleshy skin, mostly skin and blood. 
And guess what? That's what it is here, skin and blood. Oh, Roger, you've gone off the deep edge. No, I haven't. The deep edge went off long ago. I didn't have to be there with it. Okay, what an odd way to end the video. Well, there we go. What a fascinating look at the brand new species, Scorpzilla. We await your paper on the discovery imminently, Roger. What's a really, really odd belief this one is. To think that giant animals a quarter of the size of Earth roamed the Earth. Very weird. Right, there we go, another Tim Ford Tuesday, all done and dusted. Thank you so much for watching. And I don't think I'm done with Roger from Mud Fossil University just yet. <coughs> Keep an eye out for more content from him soon. But for now, I am done. Thank you so much for watching, it truly is appreciated. If you enjoyed today's video, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, and if you really enjoyed it, hit that like button too. Just enough time to once again thank Raycon for sponsoring today. Remember, visit buyraycon.com slash simandan to get 15% off your first Raycon purchase. I have been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a fantastic day and I'll see you all tomorrow for another Misconception Mini. See you then. Good old Roger. Uh, got all these animals all over the world. Animals. He he is to coin the technical term completely hat stand. Yeah, what did all, all these big animals eat each other? Well, you know, <laughs> I mean, you, if if you go on his if you go on his YouTube page, he's got videos where he I mean he claims to have DNA evidence of these you know mud fossils and things. He's got nothing of the sort, and he keeps he there's a university or something somewhere you keep sending this stuff off to to be tested and i think they've pretty much had enough of him you know because they are just rocks you know it's, oh this is a lung and this this is a foot <laughs> they, uh, no no they're just rocks they're, they're rocks that that vaguely look like something that you want it to be you know i mean it, it's um was it pareidolia you know he, yeah, he pareidolia yeah yeah, uh, yeah I, and, and they are. They're all utterly convinced that, you know, they, they thought, oh, oh, this this is a part of an intestine. This is a lung, because look, this looks like a lung. Yeah. It's a rock. And now we've got a name. Uh, I, I'm afraid that in 99% in, <laughs> in, in of, of all cases of fossilization, soft tissue doesn't survive the process. You don't get fossilized lungs. And how did we get poop coming out of a out of an animal that's not around anymore? Well, you don't. You you can get fossilized poo because that's called coprolites. Ah, okay. My village that I grew up in used to have a windmill, and it's now a barn, strangely enough. But it was a windmill that was built for grinding fossilized dinosaur poo, and they use it as fertilizer on the fields. Hmm. That is a thing, but it's still fossils. It's still something that's millions of years old, and it's it's fossilised, and it's still got enough of the minerals left in it. Where were they getting the fossilised poop from? Uh, there, there was an old pit on the outside of the village that um, that they dug up for this this chalk substance called clunch, and it was a really dense chalk material that they used to make blocks out of for building houses. And in amongst all the chalk, and you'll find this in chalk deposits, you'll find a lot of fossils. And I think that's where they were digging them up from. Wow. But, I mean, that's going back that's going back a long time ago, you know. Probably so, the, so no the, more yeah. poop left. We, we, <laughs> we, we, have, we have much better fertilisers to put on our fields now. Um, but, yeah, that, that is an actual thing. But all of these guys claiming that they found mud fossils. I mean... <laughs> The term mud fossil is nonsense. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, they, be, they found something that looks vaguely like what they want it to be, and therefore it must be. But he's just looking at, you know, thousands and thousands of square miles of, of area and going, oh, look, that looks a bit like a dinosaur. That looks a bit like a dragon. That looks a bit like a fish. And that's Scorpzilla. Yeah, yeah they, they are utterly, utterly bonkers. Oh, love. Oh. Well, that's your lot for tonight. Oh, and my cup has gone cold. I had to get a fresh cup of coffee because I was starting to struggle. <laughs>
Uh, I must be getting old or something. Now I drive down to London and back, and I'm like, oh, I'm knackered. Uh, well, yeah. This ain't right. Well, I think I was probably a bit tired to begin with, but what with that and the heat, it's yeah. it is getting a bit, you know. It's the long straight freeways that tire me, yeah, because you're just driving along straight. Well, here we go. I've just looked up the Wikipedia page on coprolites, and it's got to coprolite mining. Mm -hmm. uh, and the major area of extraction occurred over the east of England, centred on Cambridgeshire and the Isle of Ely, which is about 20 minutes from the village that I grew up in. Mm -hmm. So it was a very local thing. It's refining being carried out in Ipswich by the Fison Company. Doesn't say they still do it at all? No. Yeah. Um, the industry declined in the 1880s, but was revived briefly during the First World War to provide phosphates for munitions. Mm. But, yeah, they just they, they don't do it anymore. Like you said, newer technologies. Exactly, yeah. And I'm fairly certain in my village it's because they're excavating this, this, this clunch... Um, that's a fairly local thing as well, I think. I think they're excavating that and finding a lot of these coprolites, and I guess somebody must have tested it and thought, oh, high in phosphate, we could use that. Oh, it looks like Alan didn't um, recover enough to turn back up because he was a bit under the weather. No, was he not very well? Yeah. Yeah, just before we started the stream, he mentioned that he wasn't feeling good. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, I've seen it in Discord, yeah. yeah. Oh. He, oh, no he, he, needs, to... he needs to recover himself, because I think he's he's planning on going and looking at the um, uh, the Globe Lie Tour, isn't he? Oh, okay. Well, I'm I'm hoping, if 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 work permitting, um, they're in Nottingham on a, a, a Tuesday later in the month, because Jem was asking me, if I wanted to go up there and, and meet him and, and go and witness said event. So I said, yeah, if, if I've if got nothing on. Yeah. 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 If, if, if my diary is free, then I'll take a few hours out and I'll, I'll, cause Nottingham's not too far of a drive. I'll drive up there, meet up with Jem and, and we'll go and um, point and laugh at the idiots. <laughs> In that order. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you think what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sounds, sounds sounds like a bit of a laugh, that. So, yeah, provided I ain't, I ain't got anything, you know, if there's nothing in the diary, I think I can probably wing it and get away with it. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, I, I think they're in, they're in Norwich on the Saturday or the Sunday. Well, that's not far from Alan. No, well, Alan said, oh, I could go and do that, and... I think his daughter sort of said, oh, no, 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 that's not a good idea. Alan said, yes, he is. <laughs> Alan, Alan has just had to learn to contain himself and not get too high strung about it. You've got more chance of that sort of stuff happening over there than what we have here because I, we never, I never hear about anything like that over here. I, you just you, you haven't got that many of them, and I just don't think they organise themselves as well. And I I think I think just the the, the actual um, the logistics of trying to do that in Australia, mm. which is why yeah. I think it doesn't happen. Well, Paul, um, Rich, uh, Bandy, and was I think that was the group. That was a few years back now. Yeah. We were, we were going to have another meet-up this week, um, uh, Terry. Yeah? But um, it, it had to be postponed because Rich managed to get COVID. Oh. Uh... <laughs> yeah. So his trip down to Melbourne's been delayed. <laughs> yeah, mean was we're going to meet up one time too, but that didn't happen. And there was talk that Mel was going to come along this time too. Oh, huh. well, that would have been interesting. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. See if off. he's as keen to pick a fight in real life as he is he over isn't, here. Yeah. <laughs> he's up. He's up in. He would be. <laughs> he's up in Queensland, isn't he? No, no, he's in Melbourne now. Okay. He's in Melbourne. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't think I'd be able to make it down there. <laughs> You'd have to swim, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> At the moment, yeah, it's so wet here. Yeah, yeah. yeah everything in Australia yeah. is like 3,000 kilometres away from each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you got to take a pack lunch when you're like out in the west with these blokes that live out on these big properties just to get to the I'll letterbox. I'll never forget, Terry, when, when my brother was young, he did a uh, farming apprentice overseas. He did six months in Wyoming and he did six months in Germany, right? And a couple of years later, a couple of his German hosts came over to visit him in Australia, but they didn't tell him. They rang him up and said, oh, we've just got in at the airport. Can you come and pick us up? <laughs> and he said, which airport? And they said, Perth. And he goes, righto, I'll be over there in about a week. <laughs> 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 oh dear! <laughs> I mean, it, at least over here, when when they say it's a London airport, I mean, okay, Heathrow, yeah, it's on the outskirts of London, but you could call that London. And then you get to Gatwick, yeah. it's a bit further out. And then you get to Stansted, and it's like that's not bloody London, but it's still drivable, mm. you know. But, yeah, when you're on the wrong side of the bloody country. Yeah. Yeah, get a connecting flight, then ring me again. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely need a commercial airport down this way. And the airport we've got down here is the historic airport that the um, John Travolta flew the the big aeroplane into. Well, back in the 70s, there was a shortage of teachers in the country areas here in Victoria. And so they imported some from the US. There's this one particular woman, she came over and um, she met a local farmer and she married him and all her family were back in America. And <laughs> she come from a fairly, fairly well-off family. And they, and they uh, wanted to come over and visit her, visit her one day. And, um, like she lives in a um, a country town here that's got a population of about nine hundred people, right? Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. they wanted to they wanted to know whether they could get connecting airports to the local international airport. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have to get a kangaroo taxi. Yeah, yeah, don't work like that over here. Sorry. No, it doesn't. No, no. Yes, I mean, I mean, over here, yeah. Um, I did fly from Stansted, that's out in East Anglia, up to where did we go? Glasgow. That's right. Flew to Glasgow. Shame we couldn't do that coming back. <clears throat> a, there wasn't a plane, and B, the time by the time we got airborne, Stansted was closed because they're repairing the runway. But was back to Gatwick. We said, "That's nice. How are we supposed to get to Stansted? Why do you want to go to Stansted? That's where my bloody car is." <laughs> <laughs> I flew out of Stansted. I kind of hope that two days later I'll be flying back to Stansted. Good old EasyJet. Thank you guys. Uh, all right then. Thanks, Farmer. Thanks, Blue. Thanks, Andre, Marie, Ampere. Did I pronounce yeah. that wrong? Now you pronounced it good. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> pronounced it, yeah. yeah. yeah it's good pronouncing. Uh, thanks, Rim Fondle, KNA, Omigs, Grumpy Old Gunt, Carl. Uh, I've got to scroll up heaps further it's now. Crump, Omigs. Crumpy, crumpy Old Gunt. Oh, I know. I get it, always get it mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> Carl. Uh, Fred, Elmigs. Oh, Judy. Room Fondle. Live. 
tiny captain. Oh, farmer's boy. Hi, farmer's boy. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Clive, that's a Clive Carmel. Oh, Stew. Oh, there was a Brian Stevens out there. Pack dehydrated water is a scam. Try my pre hydrated water at only seventy five US dollars a gallon. Really? Bargain. Okay. Pre hydrated water. Oh, I like the sound of that. Okay. Oh, that's going by the thumbnail I put up for the show. <laughs> yeah. I'm well, still Lindsay keeps on quiet. talking about hydrogen. Lindsay keeps on talking about hydrogenated water. <laughs> Elmix, tiny captain. Poor old boy. Uh, yeah. I think that's everyone. I can't go any further up because the chat only lets me go so far back. Oh, I speak. There, Carl. See, Jeremyism, and Rim Fondal. All right then, night panel, night peanuts. We'll see you on Saturday, hopefully. Yeah. With some more dirt. See you, peanuts. Yep, I won't be here Saturday. Ah, okay. Don't forget to bring a note from your mum. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll Any, tell you later. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Any words of wisdom? No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get it eventually one of these days I'll, 